Like a Pete Brewer for the Ravens. Pete, you part of a linebacker. I'm here with linebacker Pete Brewer for the Ravens. Pete, you part of a linebacker for the Ed Super Bowl Stars this year, and yourself, you had a very impressive year. Uh, what makes you think that you are um, as a linebacker group for us over time? Well, luckily, we've had a lot of the guys for a few years now. I mean, Matt Bailey's been a stellar linebacker for this league for years. Um, they've also been coached, the same coaching group myself for years. And, yeah, Tom Hodgins who just came back from um, the injury last year. We were lucky to get him in the second half of the year. And uh, our favorite second favorite Canadian, Mark, uh, came to the club this year and has been an absolute lightning rod for us. We're very lucky to have a lot of depth and guys that buy into the system. This week. How has the defense as a whole felt in this game? Look, we're, we're focused, um, we're energized. We've had uh, a strong finish to the season with uh, not only uh, not letting up points, but scoring some ourselves. So we're very excited to uh, have the challenge of going against a really good Rhinos team um, and see how we match up. Sweet. You've been a part of this Ravens team for a while now. Uh, you've seen what this team looks like when they're winning. Uh, going up against a much stronger Rhinos side, as you, as you said, that you faced er than earlier this year. Um, do you think that this team might be too worried about the challenge after all of the success you've had in the past? We don't take any game lightly, so we, we scout and prepare each week as we would the week before. So that's been that way since uh, we started having success for the last four years. So each week we put the same focus, the same scouting, the same energy, and it's so different. It's just a bit more hyper-focused on a great Rhino squad. Um, you hope that ourselves and the Rhinos is the best we're going to be is today because we've had all season to get to this point. So, um, look, we don't back down from challenges, but we're very excited for the opportunity this week. Cool. Thanks, buddy. Hello, hello, turn that on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the 2022 Men's Sun Bowl. First team coming out will be the Brit, the Brisbane Rhinos. Can we give them a warm round of applause? I'll see the Brisbane Rhinos flow down to this side and line up for our national anthem. And introducing the 2022 minor premiers, the Bayside Ravens. Please give them a warm round of applause. Ah, uh, sorry, yep, my bad. Sorry, working on the uh, can we please remove our hats and be upstanding for our national anthem? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
We'll see both teams take their sidelines and captains will be out momentarily for the toss. Okay, that's the toss. Welcome to WJ Scott Park, home of East Rugby League, where today we see the pinnacle of gridiron in Queensland, the Sun Bowl. The grand final for the gridiron Queensland season, where the undefeated Bayside Ravens take on the ascending Brisbane Rhinos. Bart Foley in the booth here, joined by Sam Aitchison. Sam, what have we got in store for tonight? Well, I'm going to do my best Chris Collinsworth impression here. What about these two teams, man? The Bayside Ravens undefeated coming into this game and the Rhinos on a surge going into this game. Sun Bowl, WJ Scott Park, beautiful evening here on a Saturday afternoon. It is a great setting for this game. I am so looking forward to this. You and me both. Both teams had convincing wins last week with the Ravens putting on 70 plus points and the Rhinos up at least 28 nil at half time. What are we going to see here? We think in tight game today? I spoke to the Rhinos head coach and he said that they're just going to grind this one out. This is going to be a, a grind game. This, uh, this is not going to be flashy. This is going to be hard nose, as he said, Midwest Kansas type of football. I, uh, for, the, for the Ravens, this is all about their skill positions and their, de and their defensive line. Two things, their receiving core, Mitch Bessie, Robbie Corker, two great players, Warwick Russell, and then their D-line, Joel Maddock, Jake, Jack Capewell. Two incredible players, two of the best pass rushers in the country. So excited for all of the matchups over the over the ground. I could talk about it for ages, but what about all these matchups? I'm so excited. And of course, the marquee matchup, the head-to-head -head between the two quarterbacks. Jared Stegman coming in for his second week in a row after Joe Cox, the starter, went down with COVID slash injury. And Mitch Bradford, the MVP for the Rhinos this season. Two QBs with a lot of experience under their belts. One looking for his uh, second, third or fourth Sun Bowl and one looking for his first. What are we going to see? Are we going to see some passing attack as well tonight? Yeah, Mitch Bradford, He in his first Sun Bowl this, uh, this evening, he was injured last year, wasn't able to play for, for the Rhinos. They also lost that game to the Ravens. So this is a matchup of last year. But I reckon this will be run the football for the Rhinos and then when the Ravens get the ball back, just flashy plays an enjoyable game from them and the Rhinos just hard nose down their throat. Okay, looks like hard to tell exactly what the call was there on the Raven, point toss. Ah, uh, we have some microphones by the officials. Very exciting. So Brian Bolzamo, head official, announcing that the Ravens will indeed receive the ball to start the game. So Rhinos kicking off. Uh, and for the benefit of everyone watching at home, uh, we are on the Rhino sideline. So we're going to get a bit of an insight into their emotion throughout the game and give you a bit of a live, fe live reaction on their feelings. But uh, conditions here today look very, very nice. The field itself is in outstanding. Uh, uh, it lo looks outstanding and the grass is very, very good. Very flat pitch. Getting cooler here as the evening goes on. We will move into a nighttime game, so the lights have been turned on here at WJ Scott Park. But uh, yeah, first quarter, what's, uh, what's the Raven looking to do with the ball first up? I reckon they'll just try to just assert their, uh, assert their passing game. Maybe a little bit of run here. Ben Curley, offensive MVP for the year, I was, as voted by Oz Ground Focus. This will just be interesting, this first five minutes of this game, just see what both teams just kind of settle into, just see what they do just to start this game, and then we'll go from there. It'll be interesting. And for those of you at home who can't see the entire stadium, we are slowly filling up sideline to sideline with supporters, not only for the Ravens, but also for the Rhinos. So uh, we're, we're gathering in the hundreds here, folks. So very, very exciting, very good environment to be around. But we await the kickoff by the Rhinos as they get set. And Sun Bowl 2022 underway as the kick goes very deep and lets the ball bounce and through for a touchback. Okay, so the Ravens will return out uh, for the start of play at their own 25. Big boot there from number 14, uh, which is Tom Fenwick, playing also wide receiver this evening. Clearly that's going to be, he's going to make an impact if he's able to uh, create that touchback situation every drive. Yeah, definitely. Big boot on him. Bit of AFL background in there helps. 
Okay, so it looks like we have starting there at quarterback Jared Stegman in the backfield, Ben Curley at number six, starting out of the pistol formation. Robbie Corkart in there at tight end. Well, let's see how they go. The initial handoff inside and great stop there by the Rhinos on the one yard gain. Great tackle there, Jack Lowe. Right, right in there for the Rhinos, number 43. He's had a great season. This defensive line for the Rhinos has lit it up at the second half of this year. Yeah, convincing start by the Rhinos to get them uh, no momentum on the first play. So we'll see if they're able to uh, pick up any further yardage, whether they stick to the ground game. This time from the shotgun formation, Stegman looks right to his receivers. Looking for a pass here, short to Warwick Bones Russell, who's tackled very well there. We have a flag on the field, though. I would imagine offensive holding. It looked like there was holding by the receiver. We'll wait for the call. Good tackle there by Darby Martins as well. As soon as he made contact, barely let him get anything else. That was a good tackle there by number 28. Holding might be there on number 53, Latham Den. So the Ravens march back 10 yards and they are looking at at about second and 20 here. So not a good start here for the Ravens, backed up in their own half. But I would imagine they're looking to the air here on second down. Slight delay in play as the uh, spot is marked. And it turns out the Rhinos are actually choosing to decline the penalty. Sam, what do you think about that? I'm not too sure what the thought process there was. That's an interesting call. Presumably third and long is somehow better than second and very long. So third and nine here, folks. So interesting decision by the Rhinos, not giving them that extra play. But the, the Ravens return to the pistol formation uh, with the pass here. Looking left to Warwick Bones Russell. The ball is too far and out of bounds. So we are likely to see a punt here on the first drive. Very convincing by the Rhinos and defense to start the game. Similar play out there. That was out to Warwick Bones Russell as he's as he's affectionately called by his Ravens teammates. Good start there by the Rhinos. They really needed to assert their their def defense here. Interesting note, McCarna Garrigan not in the cornerback position tonight, at least for this first drive. He's out there at safety. And Stegman takes a savage hit at the end of that play, so uh, no doubt that will affect him going forward. But we have uh, Stu in for the punt. We as we have a man in motion going right to left, uh, but the punt is away and it's an absolute stinker. Ladies and gents, that is about a 15 yard punt going out to the 39 yard line. So the Rhinos are going to take over with outstanding field position. All things pointing in the right direction for the Brisbane Rhinos here. I think other than a pick six, this is probably the best, best start that they could have had to this game. Just not letting the Ravens get really anything to start this match and that will be a great boost for their offense. Definitely some nerves all around the field by the uh, Ra uh, Ravens offense there. So hopefully they'll settle in as the game goes on. But we have uh, really a stacked uh, formation here for the Rhinos as they go to the ground uh, and pick up a very nice three yard gain. So that was number 17, Carlos Massos, who gets the start and gets the handoff on that one. Uh, Riley Wood leading the way there on the block. Yeah, it's Portuguese, Carl, uh, Portuguese man Carlos Matos. As I said last week, one of the best additions to this Rhinos offense allows Riley Wood to to do more by playing less. Just gives him that, gives him those bigger opportunities and not as tied towards the back end of the game as well. Officially known as the Portuguesa in some circles. Okay, second down and short here as they give the handoff this time to Riley Wood and he's able to pick up a very nice gain and looks like first down for the Rhinos. Looks like they're really going for that run attack beginning off here, Sam. Yeah, definitely. Um, speaking to Levi Sturgis um, before this game, yeah, he was really adamant. He just wants to stick to his run first mentality and that was one of the things I asked him um, in, in that interview before the game as well. He was just really wanting to stay with their run first mentality and really assert themselves um, as a dominant running team. Yeah, three backs in the backfield, or two, two likely to receive the ball, one perhaps less likely, uh, and that being number 65, uh, right tackle Jacob Estevez. So not playing right tackle right now, but uh, some sort of uh, fullback that now goes out to the slot, which is a, here we go, comes for the crackback block, but Riley Wood gets the handoff, taking it left side, oodles of space down there, picks up a very nice five yard gain. So uh, we do have some yellow laundry on the field, 
Uh, but this is some incredible play calling to start the game. Yeah, and another thing from Levi Sturgis, he spoke about his really unique type of play calling and speaking to Jacob Estevez, he, was, he said, just wait and see what we have for this game and what different formations we're going to go with bringing an O-line uh, on running plays. That was a little bit different, not receiving the ball this time, but great block on the outside there. This and his man Riley Wood, the outside edge. Jacob Estevez certainly threw us in the pregame interview, which you folks didn't quite get the chance to see before the game, but he said that on his side of the line, there would be zero sacks, zero tackles, zero tackles for loss, and zero hurries, and no doubt that will be the case if indeed he does not play right tackle yeah, tonight. Yeah, that, that's a very good point, but even if he, you know, hopefully he does go into right tackle and... The reason I say that, best right tackle in the country, I would say he is incredible at that position. So we will try and keep a track of where Estevez lines up, but it looks like he's still at the makeshift fullback position for now, as the Rhinos look to absolutely pound on the Ravens here. Stand by one. Looking for the pass here this time, though, fade to the corner, and it's just to absolutely nobody. Curious decision there from Bradford. Don't know what he was seeing. Just a misread, maybe, looking for Tam Hansen, maybe going up. Back if, on maybe a post route. If that was supposed to be an inside chair, certainly Bradford had the time to see. I would call that nerves because that wasn't a as he was cutting kind of throw. That was a saw the man cut over through. So perhaps just trying to throw the ball away, feeling the pressure there. Okay, so the Rhinos still with good field position, putting the pressure on the Ravens. Continuing out of there, I don't even know it, folks. Please feel free to text in what that formation is, but the handoff to Riley Wood up the middle and is able to pick up a solid gain there and setting up a third down and about five yards. Adonil Thompson on that tackle, number 92. He's one of the more underrated tack uh, defensive tackles in this league. He's an absolute monster. Had a massive hit on, on Mitch Bradford back in week, week six. He'll be a massive part of this Ra Ravens defense tonight. Yes, adds certainly one of those big bodies in the center, sh hoping to shut down the Rhinos' run attack. So we will see if the Ravens have game plan for this power offense run game that the Rhinos are bringing out here. But it looks like now they're actually going to more of a passing formation out of the shotgun as Bradford rolls right, has no pressure, is able to fire it and is caught for the touchdown. That is number 85, Max Williams, who puts the first points on the board for the Rhinos. Absolutely outstanding. What an absolutely incredible throw there by Mitch Bradford. I thought he was going to the Max Schlatter, number two there, the slot receiver, but what a dart to the, just on the end zone line. That was a great throw. Max Williams, best, maybe the best hands on this Rhinos team, hauls it in, takes it across the line, touchdown. Incredible start to this game for the Rhinos. Keeping all the momentum from last week are the Rhinos, as we have a late substitution there, probably 12 men on the field, but they have been set up uh, and the play clock has seemingly been stopped. We have got a call from the referee, which we unfortunately couldn't hear. So we don't have the referee mic for the remainder of the game. That was a kickoff only situation for better or worse. But we do have the extra point here for the Rhinos. See if they can knock over and put it seven points ahead to start the game. High snap, but the kick is away and the kick is indeed good. Folks, I love this camera angle right down the center of the field. You can watch the ball go through the uprights yourself. He's got these big camera stands back of the end zones. Thank you to Calling All Sports for getting that set up. Adds a little bit more, a little bit more of a dynamic viewing experience for you guys at home. Hopefully, enjoy all the camera angles we have open for all you guys. And this will no doubt be a shock for the Ravens, giving up, uh, getting not getting the first down on the first drive, and then giving up seven points uh, as the opponents take over with the ball. Very unlike their success over the last three years in three straight championships. So. We will see if they have the resiliency to bounce back and find a touchdown on this next drive. Yeah, 100%. This is quite an important moment of the game for the Ravens. They have to get something going on this next drive. Otherwise, the Rhinos are going to take a major amount of confidence. Fenwick puts it deep once again into the end zone, fielded by Mitch Bessie, but he will choose to take the knee for the touchback. So Fenwick clearly has a big boot on him, and it looks like from where, where we're sitting, the wind is slightly in favor of the Rhinos on that kick, but it is marginal. 
just one or two kilometers per hour, I would say here, with a fairly cool 22, 23 degrees right now at WJ Scott Park here in Holland Park. So the Ravens will take over first down from their own 20 yard line. This time with running back Chris Farah, part of the one-two punch in the backfield out of the shotgun formation. Receiver goes in motion and gets the pop pass here. Chris Clark going left to right and is able to get through the first tackle and picks up a very nice gain. Looks about six yards there. Yeah, that looked like might have been Darby Martins in there for the first, first point, of, point of contact. Yeah, it definitely was. And Chris Clark, good bump away there from number five for the Ravens. That's an important pickup. To and get a little bit of momentum back. Finished off by Cheyenne James, CJ, who is certainly one of the big pieces of the Rhinos defense here today, playing at safety, if I'm not mistaken. He will certainly be a key stakeholder in putting the Ravens into the dirt uh, in this game. 100%, number 23, all star as well, safety for Osgar and Focus this, this week. He'll be massive for them tonight. Going up against former teammate Jared Stegman. No doubt some friendly rivalry there. Hoping to get an interception for Stegman. But we will see what the call is here on second down as we have the hard count. Very effective last week. But no free play this time. Snap is away. Fires short right. And it just is an absolute mully grubber right into the ground in front of Mitch Bessie. So very nervous start here for Stegman who... Bounces it off the ground. And it looks as though they've been backed up an extra 10 yards. So we're second and second and 20 here. Sorry I missed that, folks. Uh, second and 20. Second and very long. So tough times at Ravens High here. We will see if they continue with the air attack given the poor field position. Receiver in motion this time is Robbie Corkut running into his own man. A little confused there, but Farah has the ball in the middle of the field and is taken down by a trio of Rhinos defenders, picking up a solid game, but setting up only about a third and 12 situation here for the Ravens. One of the things that Levi Sturgis pointed out for, for the Rhinos to win this game is that this team needs to just have more heart. And one thing there, nearly four Rhinos to meet the one man there, Chris Farah. All converging on him. That is great, great enthusiasm from all of them to get there. And a bit of confusion on the uh, man in motion as he ran into his own player. So definitely the nerves are, are are showing here for the Ravens. So it looks like they're actually in about a third and ten here. But we'll see if they can pull it together as time goes on as we have the pass here from Stegman who has time in the pocket and fires to the right-hand side to receive a core cut. But he is short of the line to gain, bringing up a fourth and two situation. We well, can never underrate or underestimate the arm of Jared Stegman. That's a great pass. Gets through his progression, goes to his right. And Chris Clark, oh no, Robbie, Robbie Corkut, sorry, my apologies. One of the better receivers in this league. And the Ravens' offense stays on the field deep in their own half. So, clearly, no trust in the punt game at present, but trust in the offensive line to tr perhaps pick up with the running game. Uh, the one yard necessary and of course the Ravens will be out of shotgun all night as they have been all season but we'll, see, the Raven, the Rays. we'll see if they have and it looks like we've got a whistle here that might be a false start so oh no delay of game interesting interesting nerves are seriously at play here folks the Ravens are under the pump down seven points backed up in their own half looking to make the punt here In comes Jara Fuamoli, number 36. He had some big, big special teams plays last week against Gold Coast Stingrays. Looking, looking to him make, to make a play here. Galloping Jara will no doubt try and track down the punt here. Set up some big blocks. But Stu back in there at the punter position. Looking to have a bit of a better one this time. But pressure's on, but does get the kick away. And it's a little bit of a better kick. High kick. Uh, and looks not to be fielded by the... Rhinos, but we do have some serious indiscipline there by the Ravens with the block in the back. So that will set up the Rhinos with some fantastic field position. Hard to say what's going on inside the Ravens camp right now with some very uncharacteristic actions here. Well, one thing that I've been told a few times today is undefeated teams just seem to 
fall off a little bit at the most important times. You know, you go through the whole season, the best team. Then you come up against an underdog who just has a little bit more bite than you might. And that just, just seems like the Rhinos are on top of the moment. I wasn't fully expecting this. Yep, we'll see if that is the narrative as the night goes on. But, yep, clear push in the back there by number 92, Adnil Thompson. So the Rhinos take over from their own 39-yard line. Again, from their power formation here, two running backs in the backfield and the fullback just behind the line of scrimmage on the left side. So Estevez again, see what they have up their sleeve here. Bradbury has the ball, gives the handoff to Riley Wood going left side, has plenty of space once again, locks that up and is taken down there by Tom Hodgkinson, but gains about 14 yards in the first down. Really good signs here for the Rhinos. Yeah, Riley Wood. I think he's my favourite player in the league. Roadrunner Riley, as I call him, and he, and he likes the nickname as well. I, the first time I called him that, I didn't think he liked it, but he likes it. So Roadrunner Riley there, big pick up there for the first down. Rhino's in good position now. And he has got the M1 to run down at the moment as gaps are being put there by the uh, Rhino's offensive line. So clearly this formation is throwing the Ravens right now as uh, the running back goes in motion. But the handoff is given this time again to Wood, who picks up a three-yard gain on the play. Man in there, Tom Hodgkinson, number seven. It's good to see him back after really, really bad knee injury a few years ago. It's good, uh, a couple, uh, about a year ago, it is good to have him back. And he is the starter uh, in there. But we have some solid defensive uh, linebacker replacements coming off the bench, including defensive coordinator Peter Brewer, who has decided that the bench is his best position to begin the game, but no doubt will be a major add coming back onto the field. as Estevez goes in motion once again, looking for the crackback block again this time. Handoff is to Matos, who is met at the line of scrimmage. So the Ravens have figured out that one, and we'll see if they figure out this formation. Yeah, Estevez there, that was a little, just a little easy to predict there. Made the same motion, just on the other side. Joel Malik, number 23, able to evade the block. Got the first tackle there, that was a good, a good job there by the defensive end. And frankly, if Estevez gets a run-up into me, I will be doing all I can to avoid that hit. Thank you very much, as Matthew Bailey is able to dodge it and help make the tackle on the play there. So Bradford gets the ball here on the third and ten, is able to try and buy the space with his feet, but is taken down five yards shy. But looks to be okay, and that will bring up the fourth and five. We'll see if the Rhinos choose to go for it uh, with the relatively short field. Certainly too long for the field goal, I would say, but it looks like indeed. Nope, we have, I believe, the punt team coming on. So, Rhinos feeling a little secure in their seven-point lead. Happy to punt the ball away in this situation. I would have been happy with the Rhinos to either go for that or get Tom Fenwick an opportunity to field goal. He's got the wind at his back. That can add a really good push for the ball. He's got a good leg as it is, but they'll see if they can just drop this inside the 20 for the, of the Ravens. Well, I suspect the confidence in a 50-yard field goal on this windy day may not be shared by the head coach of the Rhinos, but we'll see what the call is on the field as whistles are blown. Uh, we have another delay of game, this time on the Rhinos, of course. So, unlikely to go for it here. No trickery, perhaps, on this one as the fourth and ten for the Rhinos. Whether that was a planned delay of game is another question, <laughs> but it's actually good. It brings them back a little bit, gives them a little bit, bit, little bit more room for a, a, for a kick. Just it is, it is good for a punter just to have a little bit more room there, even if it is five yards. Snap is good, although they're looking for pass here. Trickery as the... Oh, intercepted this time by Chris Clark, which... Interesting decision. The bat down will have gained them some extra yardage there, but intercepts it to pad his stats, but lose about 15 yards there for the Ravens. So really interesting call there by the Rhinos on the fourth and ten. Punter in there tries to throw the ball, but in this case, right into the hands of Chris Clark. As someone who likes to watch special teams happen, whenever I see a fake punt, I get a little, just a little bit of a, a jump in my chest. That is scary sight to see a, a punter go for the pass but yeah as you said the the interception brings them back from where where they would have been if the, if he batted it down so interesting decision there from Chris Clark 
So here we go again with the Ravens on their third drive, hoping to pick up their first points of the game as the handoff is given this time to Ben Curley with a little bit more space, but is tracked down from behind and in fact only picks up at best one yard. And we have confirmation about three minutes left in the first quarter. So time is a ticking down in this first quarter as the Rhinos are still ahead 7-0 over the Bayside Ravens. So Ravens this time with the two running backs in the backfield, uh, sort of a split shotgun eye, forma uh, eye formation as Curley gets the pitch to the, to uh, to the right side, but once again is unable to pick up any yardage. So the Rhinos' run defense are very convincing so far in this game. The Rhinos are, are here to play, you know, three minutes out from the first end of the first quarter. This is probably exactly what they were wanting, just hard-nosed football, Levi Sturgis brings that over from the Midwest over in Kansas. This is exactly how they wanted to play this. Just rough, tough, hard tackles, hard running. This is good for them. So third and eight here for the Ravens looking to pick up their first first down of the game. As they fake the handoff and Stegman rolls to his left, tries to buy some extra time, fires it through the middle and it's caught this time by Chris Farrer taken down behind uh, by number 35, Jackson Collins. And uh, a point about Chris Farrow's jersey. He does have Jamal, uh, one of the Center Party Brothers um, names on the back. And I spoke to Jamal a few weeks ago because I was a little confused about a picture I saw. And he choked around and he's an, he said he's an honorary Center Party for, for the rest of this year until he does get a new jersey heading into next year. So fun point there about, about Chris Farrow, number 13, for today. Yep, not a Center Party, certainly a Farrow, but certainly part of the Ravens family, that is for sure. So... Good there for the Ravens, able to pick up their first first down of the game as they continue with the two-back formation here again. This time giving the handoff up the centre to Chris Farrar, but once again met by the strong defensive line there for a one-yard gain. And one point about this defensive line, the interior. Jordan Scanlon, he is, just looking now out on the field, he is absolutely massive. And he's going to be so important for them today. He already has been this evening. This is just going to be massive game for him if he can put in some good numbers. And we'll see if they're able to effectively rotate the defensive line throughout the game, make sure those bodies are fresh and continue their dominant form up front. So once again, two running backs split either side of the quarterback this time on the second and eight here. This time fakes here, but run by Stegman who chooses to go up the center and is brought down for no gain. So Stegman, the play caller, also in at the quarterback position, chooses to fake the handoff and call his own number on that play. As we have the end of the first quarter. So rapid running clock thus far, as we will shift ever so slightly down the field, or up the field, depending on your perspective. Uh, and the Ravens will continue with the ball. Interesting first half. I I think Levi Sturgis has done exactly what he said he would do. Just run the ball, a couple passes here and there. Hard-nosed defense. This is really good from the Rhinos, but maybe not just yet, of course, for concern for the Ravens. Even though it is only 7-0, it feels like the, the score isn't as important. It's how they're playing. This is really important quarter going into the, set, into the, first, into the second half, halftime. This will be big for them. Certainly the momentum feels in favor of the Rhinos. The Ravens are looking to claw that back. Uh, but we are returning seemingly to the field for the beginning of the second quarter. So if the pace continues like this, folks, and the running game uh, continues to go on, it looks like the three-hour predicted game time is going to be considerably shorter. So we might all have uh, an early night if this kind of running attack continues. But once again, we look at the two backs in the backfield for the Ravens as the temperature continues to drop here at WJ Scott Park as the wind also picks up. Getting a little bit cold here now. <laughs> toss, oh no, fake toss left side this time. Batted away, oh, and almost intercepted there. Great play there by defensive end Jack Lowe. Jack Lowe, amazing season for him, number 43. That is a big play. And, oh, the field position they would have had if he was able to get both hands on that. You can see he's a little upset with that, but still a big bat down, the, uh, bat down there. Fourth down for the Ravens. This is a big, big moment in this game. 
And it looks like they have a change at punter. Mitch Bessie coming in, but we do have a whistle on the field. So, slight delay in play here, folks. Delay of game again, and I wonder, was that 40 seconds or throwing the ball away? Hard to say. Yeah, Interesting, it, that felt like a very, very short 40 seconds. Yeah, it must have been some form of uh, yeah, throwing the ball away, but yeah, that def definitely did not definitely did not feel like 40 seconds there. That's, that's okay, one. we have the oh. flag is being picked up and uh, some confusion there uh, by the officiating staff, but long-term veteran uh, Brian Bolzano will no doubt keep this game in control. So that flag picked up and the fourth down continues as Mitch Bessie fields the ball and rolls right and punts it and it's an absolute stinker. That is... That has gained two yards at best. Right, so special teams clearly playing a factor here in the beginning of this game as the punting situation for the Ravens, who haven't punted much all season, clearly in some disarray. And you can kind of tell that they haven't punted much this season based on how they are punting. So, yeah, also the long snapping is actually, they've, you know, really got good long snapper, which is good for them. But just a side note there. But yeah, the Rhinos are just here for this. I feel like the Ravens are a little shell-shocked. They just need to get a good stop here, get back into this game, get the momentum a little bit back on their side. But this is a good, good position for the Rhinos to be in after that bad punt. And we'll see if Coach Sturgis is able to continue this diverse attack on offense. Keep them guessing as we have the pistol formation for the Rhinos as man goes in motion. And back out again, but we have the handoff once again to Riley Wood, who picks up really solid yardage tackled there by number 52, Jack Capewell. Rhino's running attack seems very good right now. Yeah, and I'm loving the extra lineman in there as well. We've got just Jacob Estevez out there at left tackle this time. Comes around, gets that, that block on the inside, brings that man down, and Riley Wood, he's able to pick up a good gain of about 8 or 9, and that's a great play there. And they look like they've been eating nothing but steak all week as the size of the Rhinos' offensive line is gargantuan. They are some big boys up front, no doubt playing a factor as the game goes on, wearing down their opponents. Once again, out of the pistol formation are the Rhinos. This time, fake handoff roll right is Bradford. Plenty of time, no pressure, fires to the centre of the field, and... Flags go flying. We didn't see what the infringement was on the field, but a hat goes flying, so clearly some ill discipline is ha something is going on, folks. Just have to wait a moment to see what the, the outcome of all this is, but yeah, that was a good play on its own. Good block here from Riley Wood on the outside on Maddock. And hard to tell if the, the, the call is on the Rhinos or the Ravens, but the, the Rhinos sideline don't seem to be too upset, so that is the best I can tell from here. So all the officials seem to be gathering to discuss just what happened on that play. So we have an illegal shift, I believe, and then offset by some sort of roughing penalty. Uh, so it looks as though we will maintain here at second down. Unfortunately, we cannot hear Head, uh, head referee Brian Bolzamo, but something certainly happened. <laughs> Hard to say what, though. Okay, life moves on. We have second down here for the Rhinos in very good field position, marching down the field. I have a feeling that the refs have, might have just blown off in the wind there. We're getting a couple of decent gusts through here, so maybe it just, just dropped off his head. So it doesn't seem like there's an ejection there for the Ravens. Second down and three here for the Rhinos in the pistol formation once again. This time, fake handoff, shoot, short right, and nice tackle there, com combination there from the Ravens to stop the gain yard, uh, yardage gain from the Rhinos. So third down and short, what are we thinking, run or pass in this situation? I'm not sure, I'm seeing Carlos Maddox come in, I'm not sure if Riley Wood came off there, but I reckon this could be a good run play to the outside, maybe Estevez, extra tackle to the right or the left, Get him to come around, block the inside linebacker, and get a good game out the middle, maybe. Let's will, just see what happens. Will we <laughs> see a handoff to Estevez before the night is over, I would think? I would love to see that. Wouldn't Even it be great? Bring in Jordan Scanlon. We've seen it a few times, number 94. Let's see if they do it. Okay, this time once again, handoff to Matos, who's met by a sea of Ravens 
for the stop there. But it looks looks like fourth down will be brought up, but you never know whether they'll be going for it, punting it, or what will be going on from the Rhinos, considering what we've seen so far in this game. I don't think it's the worst idea to act and potentially go for this, but it looks like Fenwick is out there. The wind is going in, into their face, might bring the punt back. Bradford is also out there on the field, Ooh, yes, so it, it seems as though they're going for it. Trying to march down the field inside their opponent's 50-yard line with the fourth and, let's call it, two and a half. So three receivers to the left side out of the pistol formation is Bradford, who has the ball, looks right, fires right, and through the hands of Hansen. So Ravens take over with the ball, trying to claw back that momentum, trying to put their first points on the board. It would be outstanding if the Ravens are unable to put any points on in the first half here. It would be certainly unprecedented. Yeah, 100%. The, the Rhinos have played uh, played really well but the Ravens oh, dude, just needed to just get like a, like a big yardage play that would just get them the boost yeah, they need the I'd love to see something from Ben Curley here he's not out there right now but bring him back on I'd love to see like a big big 50 yard run from him best field position for the game for the Ravens as they take over here this time looking for the pass to the right hand side and it is caught there by Robbie Corkut but Rhino seemed to indicate that the pass was dropped but we'll wait to see where the ball is placed and they're marching it back to the line of scrimmage. So it looks like the ball went to ground there on the short pass to Robbie Corkutz. Not quite looking for the ball early enough. I think he might have just lost it over his right shoulder there as he went to ground. Unfortunately, that would have been a good pick up there. Just about five yards there, but it's unfortunate. Second and ten. Yes, uncharacteristic there from Corkut as Bones, Warwick Bones Russell goes in motion with the handoff once again to Ben Curley, who's able to find a slight seam and pick up about a four-yard gain, bringing up the third and six. Big, big third down here for the Rhinos. Really interested to see what the Ravens do here to counter solid Rhinos defense so far. It's, we can only predict, but I, I'm so intrigued to see what they do here. We'll see if the Rhinos choose to bring the pressure on Stegman, having already laid a couple hits on the run and the pass earlier on Stegman in this game. Again out of the pistol formation, looking to the pass game. The air shoots right to Mitch Bessie, who's met by defenders and is very near the line to gain. It looks as though he is just short, though. So fourth and one here for the Ra uh, Ravens. I thought he almost got that. He looked like he spun out of that tackle. He did really a little bit of a tackle break there. That was great to see. But I, it must be fourth down. I thought it was third. And yes, it is fourth down. Signal there by the ref. And... The Ravens, regardless of the play call, once again will go out of the shotgun formation. So no QB sneak here. So we will still see what the choice is. Maybe a speed option out to the right-hand side as Ben Curley is very wide to the right. But yes, indeed, it is a speed option as Curley has the ball and a massive amount of space, but is, is taken out there eventually by Shyam James. I thought he had a sliver of the sideline to take it up there, but very nice gain on the fourth down play. Yeah, big run there by Curley. Just doesn't. Just doesn't give the runners that opportunity to turn the ball over in midfield. Good play almost up inside their red zone. Good bump off there by Jeremy Char Jeremy Cowles, but Shyam James there makes the tackle. Big play. Showing he has the speed to get to the corner is Ben Curley, who is now on the wrong side of 30, but shows that his class uh, that he's shown throughout the season is uh, not to be messed with. As the receiver goes in motion right to left, Chris Clark, shotgun formation for the Ravens. Some pressure here, but Stegman chooses to call his own number once again as the flag does fly. Perhaps we have some sort of a legal shift on the motion there from the Ravens. Look like a, maybe a false start there. Uh, no, encroachment. Ah, oh, encroachment, yes. Oh. So, that looks as though it was indeed... Encroachment, so first and five here for the Ravens. So three receivers to the left-hand side. Shotgun formation, fake handoff. Fire left to Chris Clark, who has the sideline and is able to pick up a solid eight yards on the first down pickup. Broke the tackle of McConaughey Garrigan there. Was the defensive coordinator for 
part of this year. Had to go on a few injuries on the in the cornerback call for the Rhinos. And that's a good tackle there, but Chris Clark, good effort there. Second effort just to pick up another one or two. And a really outstanding cut block there by the smallest man in the field, Warwick Bones Russell, able to take out the defender, setting up the lane for Chris Clark on that play. So very nice block. So center Matthew Ollie picks up the ball or holds it there, ready to snap it away to Jared Stegman with the Ravens marching down the field. First and ten. Looking to the pass once again, firing to the middle, touchdown and dropped! Oh my goodness! He must be the sickest man in Brisbane, Robbie Corkut, as he just stone cold dropped that in the centre of the field. I don't even think he was covered. That was wide open. Maybe just in two minds about where is the back of the end zone here. Oh, he didn't have a man on him. Oh, that is a big, big drop there by the Ravens, but still only second down here. They got a few more opportunities. And no doubt his confidence will be a little low after two straight drops. So we'll see if he's able to pick that up as the game goes on. This time, handoff inside to Ben Curley and luckily taken down there by Shyam James. He would otherwise have been in for the touchdown. So solid pick up there on second down, setting up a manageable third and three for the Ravens. And they look to be going quickly. So we'll see if they're trying to catch the Rhinos' substitution as there is some confusion and movement on the uh, Rhinos' side. So they go roll right this time once again as Stegman fires to the right side and bounces it once again into the ground out of the reach of Robbie Corkut. So bringing up fourth and three and you think you've got to go for it in this situation, right? Well, yeah, definitely. But do, do they just maybe just get a couple points on the board, just not risk turning it over here and it looks as though they are bringing on the kick team so after a successful 12 from 12 last week Rob Quimby comes on to prove that his value is quite significant hoping to add an extra three points here to uh, reduce the gap to the Rhinos snap is good hold is good and kick appears to be good from Quimby so the Ravens unable to push it in after the really uncharacteristic drop by Robbie Shawhands, core cut. Uh, so the Ravens only get the three points on that drive. I was there for their week three game against the Ravens for the Rhinos back in uh, up in Carina. This is about six and a half minutes for the rest of this f for, uh, second quarter. This is a massive turnaround for the Rhinos. Uh, this is this is a big performance from them so far. Ray, uh, Ravens, three points on the board now. That's important. This will be a big end to this first half. And no doubt the Ravens will need to keep them out of the end zone to stay in this game as it looks like we're going to have a low-scoring affair after the Ravens put up 80-plus points last week and the Rhinos put on a similarly decent chunk against the Stingrays. So a real defensive struggle here tonight, folks. So Mitchell Bessie looks to put it deep into the Rhinos half as the kick is indeed away and the kick is indeed long uh, and fielded by Cheyenne James in his own end zone choosing to take it out tries to find space left side is met there by Cam Gardner who is able to bring him down small man Cam affectionately known as Romo able to take down the giant CJ on the play really great tackle there yeah and there was a bit of a risk taking out of the end zone but took a little bit a little bit of that risk back you know, only lost five yards if he opted for the touchdown instead. A uh, touchback, sorry. So yeah, not the worst result there for the Rhinos, but a great tackle there by Cam Gardner. So the afternoon slowly turns into night here in Holland Park, WJ Scott Park, as the Rhinos start from their 16-yard line. Once again, with their power formation, Fake hands, handoff, pitched to the right side, but met deep in the backfield. Very deep in the backfield there by Joel Maddock. Joel Maddock, all-star for, for this Ravens uh, Raven D-line. What a player he is. 
so much produ production out of him, and that's a big tackle there on Carlos Mados. And if anyone follows his Instagram, Jay Madfit, you'll know that Joel Maddock is in outstanding shape coming into this season and coming into this game. Do check him out if you're interested in shirtless photos, ladies and gentlemen. But the outstanding play there, about an eight-yard loss, setting up the second and 18 for the Rhinos. So looking at the air once again as fires right and just well over the head of the receiver there. Just the miscue there from Mitch Bradford. It's unfortunate there. That would have been a good pickup there just to get back some of that third down, uh, some of that uh, yardage back. But now big third and long here. This will be important. And some real miscues on both sides tonight, which is very uncharacteristic. That throw too high for the receiver. Stegman bouncing the ball into the ground to his receivers. Clearly... Perhaps the wind is playing some more of a factor than we're anticipating. Perhaps nerves are playing much more of a factor than we're anticipating. But both teams certainly just finding their feet in this first half. Bradford looking to pick up the 18 yards here on third down. Has some time. Fires left side to Hanson, who's able to catch it. Uh, and gets very near to the first down line, will wait, and indeed is able to pick up the first down. So really outstanding play and great connection there between Hanson and Bradford. I was just looking at Tom Hanson up against Jack Popel. What a throw that is by Mitch Bradford. Right where it needs to be, Tom Hanson, he's a big body. You can put it up above those, up above those defensive backs and he will come down with it. That's a great catch and throw there. And really didn't have any pressure on the ball there by the defensive backs, so it's a very strong catch uh, and able to pick up that first down on the probably the worst field position they might get all game. Well, the worst down and distance, certainly, as the shotgun formation this time. Fake to Riley Wood. Hansen gets the ball again and met by Popel and a sea of other Ravens after a good couple yards. Uh, no, sorry, about a one yard on that pickup. So wind continues to blow here as once again we are going into the evening and temperatures seem to feel a little cooler than, than the Bureau of Meteorology suggests. 22 degrees, but certainly chillier here from where I'm sitting in the booth. Yeah, we've got the wind going right at our back. It is not the best experience. I'm very cold right now. Hand off this time to Wood up the center. Met there and we have once again flags flying. Two flags here on the field. So. We will await the call from the officials. More flags than we've seen most of the season thus far. You've got to wonder if it's ill discipline or lack of timing or what's going on. As you said, maybe a little bit of nerves on both sides. You know, it's a big occasion. So we either have a false start or a legal procedure, but presumably a legal procedure considering they have declined the penalty. And I'm getting nods from the officials here, so thank you very much. Pat on the back myself. So, third down and 10 here. Are they able to look to Tom Hansen on the long yardage? Yeah, and it looks like might be back up against Jack Popel, and he certainly is, so this will be a big play here. See if we have man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Jack Popel number one there. Center of screen as Bradford rolls right, looking and gets sacked there by that appears to be Villy once again making his presence felt. Mitch Bradford sometimes opts to use his, uh, opts to use his legs if he can't see, see an open, open receiver. Just unfortunate there, didn't get the opening that he usually has where he can pick up about you know 10 yards every now and then, but. Yeah, great, de great defensive line work there by the Ravens. And for those of you at home who like grinded out football, welcome to your favourite part as we are 7-3 deep into the second quarter here. Uh, as time is ticking, no doubt we are looking perhaps at the second last drive or the last drive of this half as the punt is away and it is a bit of a wobbler, uh, but is able to kick all the way down to the 30-yard line for the Ravens. So... Clouds start to descend here at WHA Scott Park. You do wonder if we're going to get any rain as the game goes on. Predictions are for zero to one millimetres, but once again, uh, hard to say if that's going to be accurate as I do feel some flecks of moisture coming on my cheek. Two and a half minutes left here in the, three and a half minutes, excuse me, left here 
in the second quarter. So no doubt the Ravens will be looking to hold the ball for the rest of this uh, half, not looking to kick it away or, and give Bradford and the Rhinos the chance to score here late in the second. Yeah, this will be an important moment of the game. Three and a half, three and a half minutes out from half. Rhinos have really asserted themselves on defense. Ravens just stuttering a little bit. This will be important, three and a half minutes. Getting into um, getting into a uh, high tempo type of, um, type of area here. Okay, shotgun formation here. Oh, and we have, oh, interesting. No flag there. Oh, great catch there by Chris Clark on the quick seam route. Very nice hands. Should have been maybe an offside there on Mitch Bessie. Just kind of looks like he jumped the gun a little it, bit. I was about to say there didn't appear to be anyone on the line of scrimmage. So M Mitch Bessie looking to get up on the line of scrimmage to ensure there was no illegal procedure call and clearly no flag there from the referee. But going to the air once again is Stegman firing deep right side. Does he have the man? And it is just out of the reach of Mitch Bessie. So... Clearly, confidence is high, but the ball out of reach that time for veteran receiver Mitchell Bessie. And as you say, veterans, this is a really experienced team, and they, they know what it takes to win. You know, a lot of them have been here for their back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back championships. Let's see how important they'll be today. Yep, looking for their fourth in the row are the Ravens, with quite a large core of players being in that team for the last three years and into this fourth year. So Stegman on second and 10. Looks middle this time to Chris Farrow with a bit of space up the center. High body position met by several defenders and he is able to pick up a very nice first down. Yeah, similar play there, just a little dump off there to Chris Farrow. Picks up, you know, about 10, 15 yards. It's a solid play for them. It's worked a couple times now. And we are going no huddle here for the Ravens. So trying to put the pump on the Rhinos to finish off this second quarter fake pitch looking to the middle Chris Clark once again takes an enormous hit and is unable to secure the ball that was a great tackle by uh, number 12 Makana Garrigan I think there was a little bit of Ernest Moore in there number 8 oh, to yeah, me that is all Garrigan yeah, putting all the Garrigan. hit stick on Chris Clark and that is two big boys on one another yeah, I saw more jump up from that. I thought he was in that, but Makana Garrigan laying down the law there, coming down from the safety position. What a hit. And we will see if that has any psychological effect on Chris Clark, but he does appear to be okay, at least physically, on this play. So very exciting scenes here for this Sun Bowl game as Stegman fires deep right side, and it is just nowhere near the receiver. So... I think that was supposed to be third down, or no, we are now bringing up third down here. Big third down this. Okie dokie, yes indeed, big third down. Big situation in this game. If the Ravens are able to take the lead into the second half, no doubt that will do wonders for their confidence after a very shaky offensive start to this game. Yeah, this would be a big play for them. Even, you know, just getting the conversion here, keeping the ball. Given the Rhinos less handback time, this will be very important here. And don't be fooled by that back cam, folks. It is not daytime anymore. This is going into the night as Stegman has the ball, has some pressure left side, rolls out to his left and fires to the center of the field and just over the head of the receiver. So fourth down here for the Ravens. Will they go to the boot? of Rob Quimby to pick up the extra three points. It looks like special teams is coming on, but we will see if Quimby is back there to kick it. Quimby's only attempt at three points last week was blocked. So this is certainly a long kick. I would put it at perhaps 40 yards, just under 40 yards here for Quimby. Hold appears to be good, and the kick is once again blocked and looks to be returned, perhaps, by CJ, who's able to get to the outside, at least initially, and tackled there. Interesting decision to try and run that ball back. Yeah, similar to the Chris Clark one. He should have just left it there. They would have had better field position now. 
but a great block there. Not too sure who got his got their hand on it, but big play by the Rhinos. And tackle there by uh, Carlos Tank Sinapati, who is usually playing offensive line and, of course, is in there to block for the extra, the, the three-point play. Uh, and that's number 94, uh, Jordan Scanlon for the Rhinos. Clearly the low trajectory on the kick, able to be blocked by Jordan Scanlon there. Just a quick update, McCona Garrigan, number 12, he's had a bit of special teams presence tonight, just walked past us. Looks like he's got a little bit of an ankle injury off to the medical tent. So certainly some high pressure here for the Rhinos as they take over the ball, but some great yardage there on first down for Riley Wood, who's able to pick up the first down. No doubt time will be short, and indeed it appears as though will we have a timeout here for the Rhinos. Nope, clock is still rolling, as indicated there by head official Brian Balsamo. Oh, no, here we go, finally timeout. Sorry, excuse me, two-minute warning. We've had confirmation of the two-minute warning. One thing I'd love to see here, I haven't seen it much this year, but if two-minute offense in here, this would be really interesting to see from, uh, from the Rhinos head coach if he incorporates that into this drive. Yeah, and two minutes with, I think, probably their full batch of timeouts to go, so certainly a manageable amount of time left for the Rhinos to pick up some extra points and really turn the knife here in the first half or, or going into the sheds at half time against the Ravens. So it looks left side this time, does Bradford to Hanson, who's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock. Yeah, that's a, that's a really smart play by Bradford. Didn't go all the way through his progression, just looked straight to Hanson, get out of bounds, pick up about four or five there. Big play there by Mitch Bradford. And crucially there, stopping the clock to maintain the momentum and give the uh, play callers some time to figure out what to call here on second and five. So Bradford once again out of the pistol formation. Snap is away and is, tries to buy time, rolls right. Hasn't yet passed the line of scrimmage, but is met there by Canadian Mark, who's able to stop him behind the line of scrimmage for a sack. Mark Edelswood, one of those other um, all-stars on this Ravens defense. That's a big tackle in there as well, Jack, Jack Caprell. And believe it or not, Mark Edelswold, one of the backup linebackers uh, certainly one of the bigger gym junkies, I would say, on this Ravens team. A real athlete coming off the bench there is Canadian Mark. Yeah, there's one thing to have a lot of players, but then there's also another thing to have so much depth as well, which the Ra Ravens have all over the field. Pistol formation again. This time, pressure once again, and Bradford goes down. So... Fourth down, and it looks as though the Ravens will take a timeout. I believe it's the Ravens who would be taking a timeout in this situation, as uh, I haven't seen an indication. But given the fourth down and the likelihood of the punt, fifty-six seconds. <laughs> we we have some at attempts to translate time into hand signals. Uh, but 56 seconds is indeed confirmed. We're going to work on that throughout the second half, folks. Don't worry, we're all over it. So really key punt situation here for the Rhinos. Very important to get it far downfield. As the punt is an absolute beauty going all the way to Mitch Bessie fielded. As able to get to the outside and take towards the sideline, bringing it out to the 40-yard line. Defense. So with under a minute left, the Ravens here. Very, very important situation to try and put points on the board. With the limited success, what have they got to do here, Sam? I reckon you just got to go out routes, both sides of the field, Mitch Bessie, Robbie Corkart, just get those guys out of the field, slowly move your way up. You don't have a lot of time to work with. This This needs to be efficient. This needs to be effective. And wouldn't it be a change of fortune if Robbie Corkut is able to bring it in uh, and change the trajectory? But it looks like he is on the side of the moment. Physical Slot 10. receiver Braden Quinn in there on the left side as Stegman drops back, fires to the left-hand side and finds Chris Farrer who's able to get out of bounds. 
That's what I was saying, those out routes. Wasn't the receivers this time, it was their back. Chris Farrow, great route there. And just gets out of the bounds there under the tackle from uh, Bailey Toddle. So clearly Stegman looking to attack the sideline to make sure that the Stop. clock is stopped to give them extra time to try and score here in the first half. Four receivers split to either the sides. Shotgun formation. Snappers away, looks to the air, no pressure. Plenty of time. Stegman fires left side, and Warwick Bones Russell is able to pick it up with an outstanding catch, taking it down to the 10 yard line for the Ravens. And I hear some whistles, so perhaps we have a timeout. A really amazing catch there by Warwick Bones Russell. Tip of the finger stuff. And also 10 out of 10 on the slide as well. That looks very clean. What a ball from Stegman as we go into a timeout. And what a ball, what a situation we are in. This is the kind of tight game supporters have been looking for all season long. So timeout here on the field, 36 seconds left. So plenty of time here for the Ravens to put the ball in from 10 yards out. And just a side note, looks like McCona Garrigan could be out of this game. I just saw him on crutches going down the sidelines. Saul Bembe is in number 10. That is terrible news for the Rhinos. Clearly Garrigan has been a physical presence for this team uh, and has already had his presence felt in this game. So a really big loss there for the Rhinos. But naturally, next man up. The Rhinos will continue their strong defense. But you do wonder if, if Garrigan was in the game, if that long pass would have been stopped. But we have once again Chris Farrah in the backfield. As confidence is high here for the Ravens looking to pull, put the ball in. Stegman looks to the air again, rolls right with plenty of time, no pressure, fires to the middle, and he has Chris, oh sorry, Mitchell Bessie at the back of the end zone, wide open, and we have, I believe, indication of touchdown on the field. That's a great ball there by Stegman, over the top of uh, Jeremy Cowles, not able to get anywhere close to that, and what a pass that was, and a catch as well, and Rock Russell. We just have finally had confirmation of touchdown on the field, so enormous play in this game. Right there, back of the end zone, Mitch Bessie showing the class of why he has been one of the all-star selections this year. As the ball hits the upright, so Rob Quimby snaps his streak of consecutive extra points and the Ravens are only two points ahead in this game. Time will tell if that is a key misfire. Doink? That was... Love, love hearing the doink in, the, in this sport. But one, one point I will make about that touchdown, Jared Stegman extending, extending the play out of the pocket, getting an extra four or five seconds on that. That's the experience that I was speaking about before. One of those situations where there seemed to be no man coming up the center, yet he chooses to roll right to try and buy clearly some extra time, knowing that his one of his favorite targets for the last 10 to 12 years, Mitchell Bessie, would come open to the back of the end zone. So their connection clearly... Uh, solid here in this game. As Bessie returns to kick the ball away, and both kickers have been very uh, strong thus far this evening. As Bessie looks to send it deep once again, and deep it goes, this time fielded by Riley Wood, who chooses to take it out from about one yard out and misses the first tackle, uh, and keeps going and still on his feet, but whistle is blown, and you do have to wonder Oh, you do have to wonder just how much further he could have gotten if the whistle wasn't blown, but maybe he ran out of bounds. So, knee was called down there. And we'll see if the Rhinos choose to attack the ball or attack the air on the Hail Mary here. So we've got 18 seconds left here. You'd, you'd assume enough time to be able to throw two, maybe three passes, depending on the number of timeouts they have left. Bit of uh, delay in action here, but we do have return. 
as the Rhinos are out of an interesting formation, you'd have to assume it's a kneel down. Indeed it is. So, Rhinos looking to go into the half, just down two points. Sam, we have had truly a very exciting defensive struggle in the first half. Any final thoughts in this half? As you said, defensive struggle. The Rhinos look really good, but one thing I will note, the the Ravens have gotten a little bit of ascendancy now on their on their defensive line. That's the experience, you know. Adonil Thompson, Joel Maddock, Jack Hapewell, all of them are starting to make a big impact on this game. It'll be really interesting to see how this how this game unfolds for the second half. Last half of the year for uh, Southeast Queensland Gridiron. Really, really looking forward to seeing how this game plays out. You and me both, sir. Okay, for you folks at home, we're hoping to run some of the pre-game interviews that we recorded over this halftime, but we will indeed return to you in the second half. Bye for now. Um, undefeated again this year, um, arguably the best team in the country. Um, however, the Rhinos are on a roll um, coming into this game, having not lost since your Week 8 matchup in Mitchelton. Has this game felt like the first time in a while that you felt a little more pressure than usual? Um, I think you feel pressure every game, to be honest, um, especially once people start throwing around the word, the word undefeated. Um, I think, you know, once that word starts coming up, there's already a little bit of pressure regardless of the team that you're going to be facing. Um, Rhinos have definitely been on a tear, and um, yeah, look, it's definitely going to be the game that you know we're most concerned about. Obviously, it's the big dance. You don't want to go through the season undefeated. It doesn't count when you lose to Sunbolt, you know, so mm. the job's not done. Definitely. Um, what's the situation with um, Joe Cox and Jared Stegman? Uh, a little chopping and changing this year. Um, and you did have to switch quarterbacks in week eight. So what's the plan for today? Yeah, so we had Stegs play QB for us last week as well, um, just due to Joe being um, sick and injured. Um, so it's actually, you know, there's always the saying, if you've got two quarterbacks, you've actually got no quarterbacks. And I think it's actually been the other way around because Jared's been so supportive of Joe. Um, unfortunately, Joe's still carrying a little bit of sickness and injury, so we're going to roll with Steggs. But I mean, Joe has been throwing, he has been part of our entire season. You know, it's not like we're just bringing Steggs in for the big dance, it's actually for a legitimate reason. Okay. Um, and I asked at the start of the year what makes this team click. Another season has passed, anything more to add to that? Um, no, I mean, I think it's just the guys really enjoy playing for each other. It's the culture that we've got. Um, you know, people like to be involved with this club and. Um, you know, one of the things we do at the end of the year, um, before the big game, we'd like to go around and do a circle and talk about what the team actually means to everyone. And the thing that really comes through is a sense of community, a sense of belonging, and they really just enjoy, you know, getting around the guys. And I think that's the big thing for us, is the guys don't just want to play for the winning, for the Sun Bowl. Yes, that's nice, but the guys actually want to play for each other and play for the actual culture that we've got. Okay, sweet. Well, that was Coach Jason Leon. Cool. Thank you very much. Here with Ben Curley, offensive MVP for the um, Good Iron Queensland this year. As I said, offensive MVP, all-star, league leader in touchdowns, accolades all over the board this year for you. What's been the key to your success? Yeah, I think one of the big keys for myself has been playing with such a good offensive line um, and obviously Stegs and Joey at quarterback as well. So offensive line like um, Jerry, Tank, uh, Blom, uh, Leith, Ole, just been absolutely incredible and opening up some huge lanes. So the boys there have really been making me look good, which has been yeah. really fun to play with. Um, and Stegs being such a great OC, Joey being such a great quarterback all year, it's been amazing. So 
Um, at the end of the day, it's not about the individual accolades. I obviously love yeah. that, um, but we take it one play at a time. What do we need to do? Situational football, and we just get the job done. Exactly. A um, little bit of a split backfield uh, now with Chris Farrer. Yep. I've said both Carlos Matos and Riley Wood at the Rhinos, having Matos allows Wood to do more by playing less in terms of time on the field but bigger yardage plays. Do you feel like Farrer gives you a little bit of a similar opportunity? Um, in some ways, yeah. So we're very much different backs. Um, Farrah, as you would know, is very much our bruiser back. He yeah. can push through people. I'm a small guy. Mm -hmm. He's a strong guy. So if we need three yards, Farrah's in the game and he's getting that. Um, I love open field. So we're very different assets in how we play and that we really complement each other really well. So with some of our two-back packages, they've been a huge asset for us to have and I wouldn't have gotten anywhere near the stats that I've yeah. gotten. Um, one of the things as well is that Farrah has been unlucky with work, that he hasn't played as many games yeah. as I have. Okay. Um, if he was here for all those games, he could easily be here top of the U.S. He could be in the conversation. Farrah's an amazing running back as well, so mm -hmm. been really lucky to have both of us playing. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Riley Wood, you two are pretty much neck and neck for the best running back maybe in the country. How are you feeling about that matchup in the biggest game of the year? Yeah, obviously Riley's an amazing running back. Um, looking at his average per carry, um, similar to Farrah, like if he had the same opportunities that I've had, cool. his yards would be insane. So he's a very, very good player, and our defense has obviously been ready to prepare for him. So I feel like the matchup, rather than me versus Riley, is going to be our offense versus their defense, yeah. and their offense versus our defense. Yeah. So that's the big matchup that we're looking at. We've done a lot of prep for that, and um, we're pretty excited with exploiting some opportunities. Um, whether that's running the ball or whether they shut down the run, we can pass it instead. It's not about me today, it's about what we need to do to exploit their weaknesses and yeah, um, hopefully we can shut down Riley because he's a really good player. Alright, defensive MVP and Ravens running back, Ben Kelly. Um, quarterback Mitch Bradford from the Rhinos. Um, last year you weren't able to feature in last year's Sun Bowl because of your foot. This year you're back, only missed a couple games with a rib injury, uh, but you're playing this Sun Bowl. How do you feel? Yeah, it feels good, man. I suppose it's my first official start in a men's sunball, considering I didn't get to play last year. But, um, yeah, it feels good to be out here, good atmosphere, the boys are ready. Um, good time, yeah, ready to go. Sweet. Um, you've had Tom Hansen on the field the last two games, around seven targets with an already stacked receiving core and two touchdowns in there as well. Um, how's it been having such an experienced receiver out there to throw to? Yeah, it's great, man. I mean, anytime you have any type of collegiate receiver with that kind of experience, it's going to be a good weapon to have, um, especially at his frame in the in the red zone. He's a good weapon to have. I'm sure you've seen already with the two touchdowns we've yeah. got to him in the red zone. But, um, yeah, I love all our guys, man. All our receivers are pretty stacked. We'll trade any of them. So, oh! it's good. Um, what difficulties does this Ravens defense pose for you tonight? I mean, they're a great defense, man. Everyone in the league knows that. Um, you line if they say they aren't. But um, I think what stands out to most of me is probably that D-line. They got um, a stacked D-line, all four of their guys will be bang ready to go. So um, definitely something you got a game plan around. But even, um, yeah, the DB's Jack Popper with his speed on the outside is something you have to look out for. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a good good battle, man. Sweet. Uh, Mitch Bradford from the Brisbane Runners. Cheers, mate. All right. Thanks, fellas. Um, Thanks, Mitch. Here with Rhinos right tackle Jacob Estevez. Jacob, how do you feel about your O-line heading into this game? Struggled with, um, with the Ravens in week two, then showed resilience in week eight, and then last week he gave up little to no pressure on Mitch. So how's the group feeling today? Uh, I mean, we're, we're feeling like how that statement indicates, you know what I mean, that we've been ascending, you mm -hmm. know? So like, okay, we struggled in week two, but that's in September, you know? Yeah. And then week eight, like you said, we show resilience. Uh, we got him on the ropes. So we didn't get the job done, but we got better. Last week, no pressure on Mitch. We're getting better and better and better. So we're feeling uh, ready to put on a championship performance, you know what I mean, uh, to reach our peak and, and have all of our hard work culminate and obviously, you know what I mean, to win a championship. Yeah. Um, and saying that you do have a large task against two of the best pa pass rushes, I'd say, in the country, mm -hmm. both all-stars this year. So what's the plan for Joel Maddock and Jack Capewell? Uh I mean, I, I would say personally, you know, I'm, I'm not in the business of disrespecting my opponents, but personally, I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing. You know, you say they got two of the best pass rushes in the country, but when both of them are on the field, at the same time, one of them is on me. Yeah, exactly. So then one of them is, is neutralized, you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. the, their stat line when they go against me is zero sacks, zero tackles, yeah. zero tackles for loss, yeah. zero pressures, <laughs> zero hurries. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So, so from my perspective, personally, I, I wouldn't really say so much as so what is my game plan for them is what's their game plan for me, you know what I mean? I'm going to anticipate them to, you know, I hope they've been working hard, you know what I mean? I've been working hard, so that'll be whatever it's going to be. 
um, as far as the team, like I said, man, we're, we're ready to we're ready to win. We're ready to dominate. We're ready to culminate, and even in a way, prove it to ourselves who we think we are is who we are. You yeah. know what I mean? In our hearts and in our minds. So um, you know, respect to them. You know, they do their thing, but we got all stars too. You know, we got me personally. I feel I'm the best right tackle in the country. We got I feel the best center in the country. We got the best offensive line in the country. So when I do the numbers, that's five v two. So that favors us really. Very well done. Um, Spoke to Levi Sturgis earlier in the week. Yeah. Any of you are a part of those unique package plays that he has might have to Well, you know, in the game of football, you got to have five of us a lot. You know what I mean? So uh, by, yeah. by that theory, yeah, sure, we're, we're in any packages. Um, you know, we don't have... Come on, let's see this. Watch the game. You know what I mean? All right. It's, it's going to be a fun game. You know, we're, we're here to attack. We're not going to be uh, on, on, def on defense. We're not going to be on the ropes with it. We're going to really bring it to them. So... Maybe if it's by the you know the good old same mode, maybe if it's by any type of trickery, whatever we might have up our sleeve. Go, 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 It's the champion. Go, 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 There you go, there you go. There you go. There you go. So it's the championship, you know what I mean? Yeah, the same way we support our guys. We're trying to have them support us. We're trying to all, bro, it's a big... It's a big thing. So uh, what was I saying? So if any we got any tricks up our sleeve, you know we gonna we're gonna game. you know what I mean. We gonna put all our cards on the table. It's time to win. You know what I mean. Awesome. Thank you, Estevez. Right Thank you, Rhinos. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Very awesome. Stuff. Thank you, guys. I'll see you. Here with Rhinos head coach Levi Sturgis. Coach, how's the feeling been around the team this week? Uh, morale's been good. You know, after our second loss to the Ravens, I've midway through the season, you know, we kind of all came together. We've been playing some really good football afterwards, uh, going up against a tough Stingrays team back to back at the end of the season and then in the playoffs, you know, coming away with victories. You know, morale's really, really getting to us. we got a lot of guys coming back from injury. You know, everything's looking looking up as of right now. Uh, we just got to see if that can translate into the game today. Sweet. Um, definitely in the best position regarding availability, as you said, and injuries for the whole year. Still going up against the Ravens team. Uh, this Ravens team will be tough, so what will it take to win today? Honestly, we just gotta have more heart. More heart. Everybody trains. Everybody practices. You know, it's just some, something's got to be able to give. That who's gonna be able to give more? Okay. Every, like I said, everybody's in the weight room. Everybody's on the field training and everything like that. But whenever everybody trains and everybody's got the same equal kind of talent, you just kind of got to go out there and see who wants it more. And that's really what it takes. We just gotta have more heart in these guys. Yeah, definitely. Uh, last season, runners made it to the Sun Bowl with a primary passing attack. Now it's you with the run first mentality. How do you think your run attack will fare against the Ravens defense and the more crazy Sturgis plays, obviously? Uh, you know, uh, you know, going with the run game and everything like that, you know, that's just kind of been a staple of mine ever since I started coaching. You know, growing up in a small town in Kansas, we didn't really pass the ball. Uh, so it's just kind of been something that I've been molded into and really good with uh, understanding. I'm really good at understanding the run game. But, you know, I do like to think that we're pretty balanced. We do have Mitch Bradford, you know, Max Williams, Max Schlatter, Tom Hansen, um, Taylor Lachlan, you know what I mean? We got a lot of good receivers out there, too. So even whenever people try Try to guess on us if we're going to be in a run situation we can easily pass as well uh, regarding on the formations and the plays you know everybody's just gonna have to wait and see you know i always got something on my sleeve a couple of different formations a couple of different trick plays like that and everything like that seemed to work so you know it just depends on how we do throughout the game if we really got to bring them out or not but you know other than that we're ready to rock so perfect yeah. hey coach levi stoges the runners here with Chime James from the Toronto Safety. Owned an All Star this week by Osprey and Focus. What's been the foundation of your performances this season? Oh man, um, I'd like to say that I hope to um, have built off my first season playing safety last year. Um, I think I performed pretty well. Um, I'm glad that Oz Gridiron Focus have gone through and created st stats for us to help elevate the game here in Gridiron Queensland. So um, I think with those stats and everything, stat tracking has helped um, like showcase who are some talented athletes in the league. Um, and yeah, I think just to build the foundation from the first season. So. Um, how excited are you for this matchup against the Ravens' first pass attack? Um, yeah, I'm excited. Um, you know, like as a safety, that's what you want them to do. You want them to throw the ball a lot. Um, you know, I was, I was looking in the past, they've thrown a lot more, so I actually think they might run a bit more during this game, but I was still expecting the pass, passing game, um, especially against my whole teammate, Jared State. Yeah. yeah, no problem.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second half of the Sun Bowl here. Bayside Ravens up nine points against the Brisbane Rhinos, seven. Sam, halftime injury report for the Rhinos. Yeah, McCona Gannigan is out now. Nasty ankle injury for him. So, Jeremy Cowles back to safety. Sal Wabembe is in. Deep kick this time once again, actually slightly shorter, but hits the ground, fielded eventually by Sh CJ, who's met by several people, but is able to find the outside before eventually being taken down at here the 25 yard line. So something out of nothing there for CJ and the Rhinos. Yeah, it's a good return after a little bit of a bobble there. Yeah, that's a really solid effort there by Shyam James, number 23. So, Rhinos, after a quick start to the game, scoring on the opening drive, were stalled on every drive thereafter. What do they need to do to return to that kind of opening game form? I reckon they just need to go back to this run game. They, yeah, as you said, they got a little bit stalled, but I think they went a little bit too far to the pass, passing game. Their strength is this run game, and Carlos Matos is one of, is that part of that strength. Let's see what they do here. And right tackle come seven, uh, tight end, Estevez, in there, but Riley Wood gets the handoff for the short gain. Back to the line of scrimmage. We did have a chance to speak to Estevez at halftime, and he sort of joked that we, uh, he, he took us for a, a bit of a ride on his pre-game interview as he's been lining up a tight end and in the backfield. And I asked him if he's going to get a handoff, and uh, he was uh, keeping his heart ca cards close to his chest. Yeah, he definitely didn't give anything away there, but love the personnel use for Jacob Estevez. Talented athlete. Let's, let's see if they put him in some different positions, but right now... Looks like he is just going back into his normal right tackle role. And he is the best in, best in the league at that position. I think, in fact, he's lined up a tight end there on the right-hand oh, side. Yes, as receiver goes in motion, gets the pop pass. Double reverse here as there is space down the right-hand side here for the Rhinos, but met in a savage tackle there by Tom Hodgkinson. So Max Slatter had space there initially, getting to the outside. Block set up there, but is met there. Surprise with a keyhole tackle on the left side of his helmet by Tom Hodgkinson. I feel like the Ravens are starting to mount a little, a little bit of a lead, not just on the scoreboard, but in terms of how this game is starting to play out. This will be an important opening drive for them on defense. Let's just see what happens here. Important third down here, no doubt, to try and claw back the momentum that the Ravens established at the end of the first half. So Bradford with third and five. Sends his running back in motion, fires to the left side and out of the reach. Uh, luckily, that was indeed a forward pass, so incomplete. So not good here for the Rhinos. Uh, we will see if they can continue their strong defense or if indeed they'll go to some trickery on the fourth down punt. That was unfortunate. I reckon Riley Wood would have definitely had the speed to get outside of John Maddock there. Maybe pick up the first down, but yeah, stalled fourth um, to three and out there for the Ravens defense. That's and a for me, big moment. the more they get the ball into the hands of Riley Wood, the more the greater success they will have as the game goes on. He's truly an electric weapon there for the Brisbane Rhinos. But the punter is out. We will see if he looks to the air, whether by the boot or by the arm this time around. And it looks like it's by the boot, and it is a nice one as he sends it deep to the right side. A really nice kick there. In fact, a coffin corner kick. Extraordinary inside the five yard line. Pro kick. Sign him up. Wow. Who would have thought special teams would be the talking point? That is the literal definition of flip the field. What a punt that was by Tom Fenwick. Spoke to him earlier in the game. He was really confident in his kicking ability, punting and place kicking. That was a big kick there by number 14. And once again, the Rhinos have the wind advantage at their back for this quarter. So clearly that is playing more of a factor than we thought coming into this game. So with the quarterback on the goal line and the tailback, Ben Curley, deep into his own goal, first down here for the Ravens. And the ball goes to ground, perhaps. Was it? No, indeed it was. Luckily, not hit the ground, being a safety in that circumstance. Shaky start to the first half here, and it looked to me as though that ball hit the ground. I thought there might have been a little bit of the boot underneath that. It looked like he maybe dropped it onto his boot. A little bit of a keep up there, got it back up into his hands, and yeah, could have been a lot worse for the Ravens. No doubt lucked out there on that play, bringing up second and nine. 
as they fake the handoff again, firing short, and the passing short, the short passing game just isn't working right now as the receiver needs to go to his knees to make that catch, uh, and naturally that brings the play to a halt. So Stegman still struggling, seemingly going this particular direction, uh, throwing into the wind, coming up short in a couple of those passes. So third and nine here. Ben Curley in the backfield. Stegman, no pressure in the pocket. Eventually feels pressure, fires it away, and that will most likely be intentional grounding safety. Took too long to get the ball away, did Jared Stegman, as two, he just simply throws the ball away, and indeed, oh no, we have a injured player on the field also but I suspect the call will be uh, intentional grounding, bringing up the two points for the Rhinos, making this game even. In fact, that is, seems to be what the call is on the field, confirmed by head official Brian Balsamo. So we have a nine-all game, ladies and gentlemen. One of the weirdest scoring nine-all games I have certainly seen at all levels of football. Now we've got a really interesting scoreline, really interesting game set up, and... Hopefully the injured man down for the Ravens is okay. And we haven't got a number for you yet, folks, uh, but we will let you know as soon as we know who that injured player is. But the uh, punter will come on. We'll see if it will be punter Mitch Bessie or uh, Stu Lyric. As uh, the Ravens take their traditional knee to uh, send their prayers to the injured man. I'm assuming it's, it may be one of the offensive line. But we will wait to confirm. And that is, I believe, it might be Lathan Dan. I can't say for sure, but his helmet is off. And we do have a close-up. That is indeed Lathan Dan. So big loss there for the offensive line. But once again, there is some depth on the offensive line for the Ravens. So next man up, and he's trying to jog it off. Young boy, Lathan. About 20 years old is young Lathan, so no doubt a spring in his step, hoping to return to this game. But clearly the extra point miss at in the, in the first half is a big deal here. So nine all game here. Uh, don't let the score on your screen fool you. We'll be at nine all in just a moment. And they're choosing to punt, sorry, kick the ball off the ground, are they? I didn't even know that was possible. I have learned. We, I have learned there are three possible ways to do it. Uh, I, I dare to say, on the third, I'd rather not know what the third one is. Perhaps it's some sort of arm wrestle, perhaps. Uh, drop kick is the third option. So punt, kick off the ground, or drop kick. Uh, fielded there by CJ with a head of steam through the center. Is still going, running through, and tackles. Tackled eventually by Mitchell Bessie. Momentum riding here for the Brisbane Rhinos. And we've got CJ's family just behind us as well. They were cheering him on there. Every single yard, a little bit of a bobble, able to reclaim it. And count the tackles that CJ breaks. That is four for me thus far. Finally brought down by Mitch Bessie. Truly showing his star quality is uh, Cheyenne James. So with all the momentum in the world, the Rhinos are looking to put points on the ball to go ahead once again in this game. Mitch Bradford out of the... Pistol formation hands the ball off to Riley Wood, but met in the backfield by a combination of Villy and Ads. Yeah, this Ravens D line starting to make a bit of an impact now. They were started to just get their nose in in front over this um, Rhinos O line. Now they're really starting to capitalise on these opportunities, bringing Riley Wood down there. So the trickery that we saw with some movements uh, by the tight end position. Sorry, folks, we've got a cut block here on the field, so that will back them up. Uh, yep, chop block indeed. Uh, that'll back him up, setting up the long first down play here. So that kills a bit of the uh, momentum, backing them up 15 yards, looking at first and 25 here for the Rhinos. So it must have been 
Perhaps he initiated up top and went for the chop block. So we'll see if the Rhinos are able to look at once again for the deep pass to receiver Hansen, or indeed if they'll hand the ball off to running back Riley Wood. But looking to the air is Bradford. Tries to buy some time, rolling to his right. Pressure eventually comes, and he goes to ground, sliding. So the Ravens' defensive line showing their class here in the second half with the continual pressure against both the pass game and the run game. So back them up even further yardage, folks. Uh, we have second and a postcode. Not a lot of plays in the playbook for this situation, but I wouldn't be surprised if they go to the ground and see if they can pick up some easy yards here to try and set the long third down. But we do have a whistle on the field and timeout by the Rhinos. So trying to figure out what to do in this situation after having the terrific uh, sack in the end zone or intentional grounding in the end zone, bring the game to nine all. Sam, wh what are they got to do right now? Or what's the coach thinking in this in this huddle? Well, I'm, uh, well, what I think they could do. I'm really looking at Tom Hansen out on that far sideline up against Jack Popel. He's got the he's got the height on him. J Jack Popel, he's definitely got the hands, but the uh, height is height is king in those matchups. So for Levi Sturgis, just trying to get his guys to calm down, go back to what they know. There's this run game mentality, mentality, but Tom Hansen. I reckon you look for, look to him now in this long yardage situation. And you have to wonder, he is a dynamic runner with ball in hand, so do they look to get a short pass and see if he can get some yards after the catch as well? But no doubt, hard to call plays on second and very, very long. So we return after the timeouts with twins either side, pistol formation. Receiver in motion. And the Statue of Liberty behind the back play is able to get some Riley Wood space to the right side. Met there eventually after the big pickup. Still shy of the first down, but some incredible play calling here by the Rhinos. I have seen this a couple of times from Mitch Bradford. Great hands there. That is, that is hard to do. Ball is a little bit slippery now. Got a little bit of sweat on it. That is a big, big play there by Riley Wood. Great rush. Would have loved to see him get, get fully ahead of steam there break the tackle and maybe go all the way, but great run there, great play calling, as you said. And great angle on the camera there from where you're looking for, looking from at home, folks. Uh, so we caught that, but perhaps the Ravens' defense did not as they're able to bring up a third and manageable 10 yards here. Bradford drops back, feels pressure once again, finds it, uh, continues to roll right and will look to get out of bounds, shy of the first down. So that'll bring up... Uh, we have further whistles on the field, so we'll, we'll see what the call is here. So a lot of referee involvement in tonight's game. Still no call on the field from my angle. Initial indications perhaps are against the Rhinos. But your guess is as good as mine. Indeed, yes, the ball is being backed up. And that appears to be 10 yards holding penalty against the Rhinos. So, penalties really killing this particular drive for the Rhinos. So, indeed, we have third down here. Not second down. Third down and 20 yards. So we'll see if Mitch Bradford can cook up some magic here, perhaps looking to Hanson or Wood on this particular play. Oh, and we have a false start. My goodness. Three penalties or more on this drive alone. And you can see on the replay there just, I mean, he barely moved, folks. He barely moved. Nope, that's uh, receiver Hanson on the outside. Yeah, he's he is coming back from an Achilles injury. Maybe just a little, little, little unsharpened, a little bit of a, a little bit of 
you know, unrestfulness from him. He's an experienced receiver, but as I said, he's only had three. This is only his third game back from that Achilles injury that has kept him out for almost two years. But it's a big injury for him. But now this is a big yardage play attempt here for the Rhinos. Yeah, and usually I'd say third and 25, very hard to get, but the... The Bradford Magic has been cooking and he has been successful in previous plays, looking this time instead to the short pass, so, trying to set up the screen, but great tackle there by linebacker Tom Hodgkinson, who is really having a great day on defense. Yeah, it was a play like that last week that turned into a touchdown there but for Lockie Taylor, definitely not this time. Tom Hodgkinson, back from that injury, he's had a great impact for this game and now the Rhinos will have to look to punt it away. And looking towards the Rhinos sideline, giving the double Dikembe Mutombo finger wags, Trying to send a message, perhaps. Trying to play the mental warfare game. Uh, and what is this call? Oh, is that taunting? Unsportsmanlike conduct. Wow, so Dikembe Mutombo is indeed punished. And it looks like that's an automatic first down. So... What appears at first glance to be a humorous interaction with the sideline turns out to be a killing blow for his team as Hodgkinson is punished with the penalty there. So, turning the screw were the Ravens, but now the Rhinos continue to march down the field, hoping to put themselves ahead of the Ravens. Here's Jacob Estevez lined up in that more unique fullback position. See what they have up their, up their sleeve here. Going to the ground again with Matos finding up the centre as the lineman falls a little awkwardly, but we will see if he stays down and he, on initial look, he does go to ground. That is uh, inside offensive lineman uh, Luke Rangisau, but he is now, I believe, on his feet, so... and s seemingly staying in the game. So, awkward fall, but hopefully not too bad. Second on nine in what has been one of the weirdest drives I have ever seen for the Rhinos. Once again out of their power formation, handoff inside with plenty of space but met eventually there by the Ravens. Initially signs of space but three Ravens fill that gap. Looks like he had the space outside. Look, he could have gone to the edge here. Ooh, actually maybe there's a tackle there underneath us. Tom, Hod Tom Hodgkinson again, number seven. He has had a massive impact in this game. Some big tackles there but... Riley would, love to, would have loved to see him go to the outside and see what he could have done instead. Sets his team up with good field position, though, with the third and six. Very manageable down and distance in this situation. But you just never know what's going to happen on a Saturday in Holland Park. Bradford fields the ball. Looks left, fires left. And just to absolutely nobody once again true confusion the chemistry felt between Hansen and Bradford that we saw last week just really isn't there tonight and that's just an absolute wobber at the hand I think that one's a bit of slippage uh, out of the quarterback's hand and if, if anyone's thrown a ball before that can sometimes happen but certainly not the situation you're hoping would happen in right here and they are setting up for the field goal so some confidence in the kicker here what will happen? Quite a long field goal. Perhaps 40 yards, I would call it. And the kick is away. It's an enormous kick. And the field goal is good. I stand convinced that the boot of number 14, Tom Fenwick, that is the finest gridiron Queensland field goal attempt I have ever seen. That was gorgeous. And that was clean off the boot. Looked the, the, just the form on the ball. That was Brilliant watching it go th through the post. Now the Rhinos, 12-9 lead going in, potentially looking at the back end of this third quarter. This is a very interesting interesting period of this game. For you at home, folks, I don't know if you heard the impact on foot of foot on ball, but I heard it through my noise-canceling headphones. So rest assured the force put through that man's leg was quite considerable, and it went sailing over the uprights. So looking to repeat that on the kickoff is Fenwick. With the Rhinos going ahead in this game, Fenwick puts a high one this time, that'll, and the Ravens will let it bounce, and it would be picked up 
uh, with a fake end around by Chris Clark, who has some space to the right side. Up the sideline is Chris Clark. Is he able to beat defenders? Is going through and running and down all the way to the 20 yard line. Trickery there on the return by the Ravens. My goodness gracious, what a game. That is an incredible fake end around. Look at that. Completely fooled everyone and he gets out of one tackle, misses uh, just up here now. Breaks away from Fenwick, gets out of the tackle there. And then it's more able to drag him down by his jersey. What a great play there by Chris Clark. And had nothing but space on that fake. So clearly the Ravens are looking deep in their playbook to figure out what to do here, down three points. But with great field position, they hand the ball off here to running back Ben Curley with speed to the outside. Finds a bit of a gap before being clobbered by three men. Wowee, what is going on? This is a great summer. This is a fantastic way to end the season. Great game here. Big hits. <laughs> Trey Formoli on Robbie Cork up there. A little bit, of, little bit of outside fire there. That was a great play there by Ben Curley. And let there be no doubt, folks, that these are the top two teams in the league facing off against each other tonight. We have seen a real back and forth affair with some incredible defense, incredible special teams, and some absolute madness across the field as several players go in motion. Some confusion seemingly on where to line up here uh, as the Ravens go out of the pistol formation looking to the air as the wind blusters here, fires left outside of the reach of Warwick Bones Russell who is looking for the holding penalty. So the connection through the air tonight for the Ravens has been less than their normal efficiency. Perhaps that wind is playing a factor, perhaps nerves, hard to say. Yeah, and I reckon that wind is starting to become a factor. It has been actually for the, most of this game as well. We can feel it come, uh, going onto our back as well. Seems to be faltering for the Rhinos on their pass game as well. But yeah, you'd reckon from Jared Stegman they would be a little bit more efficient. But let's just see what they do here. And, and let it be known that perhaps we are not factoring the quality of the defense in this situation. The Rhinos clearly playing great pass defense with the fake pitch inside handoff to Ben Curley, who's once again met by three Rhinos defenders taken down for the short game. So that brings up fourth down and five yards here. So the question will be whether they bring on the kicker. No, they are going no huddle. So quickly returning to play are the Ravens. Two back formation. Will they try the hard count here? You'd have to assume this is the situation they'd go for it in. And some delay here as the Ravens call the timeout. Perhaps attempting the hard count to bring them off bring them offside but goodness gracious I need a breather folks what a game and the, the last like about a, a three three and a half minutes this this game is just continuing to go up a gear this is going to be a really interesting interesting end to this game fourth heading now into the fourth quarter we'll get a time how far out we are but what a game this is becoming Shades of two years ago in the grand final uh, between the Rhinos and the Ravens. Not quite the same scoreline, but the same level of tension, the same back and forth between those two teams uh, that saw um, uh, a really great back and forth game and uh, the Ravens picking up the victory on that occasion. And we're about three minutes out from, fourth uh, from the fourth quarter now, getting into crunch time for both teams. So a break in play, perhaps what both teams needed to catch their breath and figure out the plan of attack given this situation. So it appears as though the Ravens' offense remains on the field. So enormous situation here for Stegman and his receivers. As you have to assume, they are going to the air in this situation on the fourth and five. Noise coming from the Rhino sideline. No pressure for Stegman. Fires and the ball is batted away. Rhinos take over. Big play there by Ernest Moore and it's good that he batted it down. I'm not sure if he went for the interception but it's a better result from the... He didn't, didn't make the catch there. Gets a few more yards on that. Big, big turnover here for the, for the Rhinos. And the coverage by the defensive backs has been outstanding all night long. No space for the receivers. Great defensive showing by the defensive backfield of the Rhinos. Being on the Rhino sideline, we get a bit of an insight into their emotions and no doubt spirits are very high right now. Confidence is running high. Feelings of victory 
or the taste of victory is nearly in their reach as we are approaching the end of the third quarter here. And what a storyline it would be if they bring the almost four-year undefeated streak of the Ravens to an end as some interesting play calling here. Mitch Bradford continues to run with the ball after what appeared to be some confusion with the handoff. Is able to pick up a very nice gain actually on first down. Yeah, and Mitch Bradford has had a great year on his feet as well. Coming off the back of that foot injury he sustained last year, doesn't seem to have any fear at all. Hard running, finds the line, is a great effective runner at quarterback. Yeah, quarterback looked left. Running back ran right on that one, but you know, all things are pointing directions of the Rhinos as he's able to escape the oncoming pressure and pick up a very solid gain there. So second and a short two here as the running back goes in motion and Riley Wood takes the hand off and looks to keep the legs driving and pick up the first down here for the Rhinos. So no doubt we will be seeing a heavy diet of Riley Wood as the Rhinos have the ball and the lead marching through this third quarter. Yeah, as I said, back end of this third quarter now and Riley Wood, I love watching him. He may not be the biggest guy, but he has the ability to break tackles and get under the leverage of, of larger tacklers. He's a very effective runner. And no doubt using up as much clock as possible, looking at six seconds left on the play clock here. So we will see if they're able to get the ball off in time, uh, just off in time as Bradford is trying to escape the pressure, fires to the left side. Oh my goodness! Almost intercepted there by Jordan Desbro, looking for the short pass there to Cheyenne James. What a moment that might have been, folks. And just to escape the pressure there, but... Oh, uh, an absolute a, wobbler dropped cold there by Desbro. Such a risky pass that from Bradford. Maybe just a little rush of blood there. Didn't see Desbro out of the corner of his eye. And yeah, very lucky that he wasn't able to haul that in for Certainly the Rhinos. didn't have the pep on that particular throw, but gets away with one, does Bradford on that play, as we do have another player down, seemingly this time with a bit of cramp. So conditions, though they are cool, have been very hot throughout the day, so perhaps a bit of dehydration is playing a factor. Sam, what are the keys for the Ravens defense to try and put a halt to this Rhinos offense right now? Well, when you're going up against a run first mentality, You've got to obviously neutralize that run game, but also not let the pass game get over the top of you when you're expecting the run. The Rhinos have one of the most underrated passes, uh, pass attacks in this league, such a good core, but the Ravens cannot let them jump on top, of, uh, on top of that opportunity, and they need to stay focused here. Focus will be a key as this match goes on. Fatigue may be playing a factor for players coming into the fourth quarter. We have a heavily stacked formation here. I would say that that is all 11 players surrounding the ball. This is one of these plays where they bring in the linemen and I'm loving it. And okay, we have a, we have a flag on the field as the legs keep churning there for number 43, Jack Lowe. We did see him do a similar thing last week. Bit of a jab step left before driving up the center. Met there by a sea of Ravens, but no doubt his big body trying to drive forward there. So curious to see that deep into the third quarter here. First time we've seen that formation, but no doubt that is an intimidating front to face with big bodies, 100 kilos or more across the face of the offensive team there. Oh, okay, we seem to have had some sort of penalty on the play, backing them up for a repeat of second down. Of course, that was the flag in the field, didn't get the call. But Bradford will this time look to the air and has some space down the left side. Interception by Matthew Bailey! Setting up blocks, bumping off runners. Oh my goodness gracious. Massive error there from Bradford. That tips the momentum massively in the favour of the Ravens now. Oh, that is a 
massive mistake there by Bradford. King, He'll get sorry, King in on Hansen. And Bradford, was he down on that play? It appears as though quarterback Bradford might have some sort of injury based on a hit there. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is a back and forth game if I've ever seen one. We do hope that Mitch Bradford is able to uh, get up and return to this game. And seemingly the injury didn't happen uh, on the initial play, but rather on the return. As we see here, the slow-mo replay of Matthew Bailey trying to follow blocks and bumping off offensive players. Oh, and he, yes, it's the tackle there. Shoulder, oh my goodness. So we do hope that it's not a bad shoulder injury here for, uh, for Mitch Bradford as we have some officials here trying to discern if there was any foul play. Certainly not on Bradford, but elsewhere. As you'll see, both sidelines have taken a knee, hoping that the starting quarterback for the Rhinos is able to get to his feet. And he is luckily able to get to his feet at this point in time, folks, as he's clapped by both sidelines. Really big blow for the Rhinos. And holding his shoulder is Mitch Bradford clearly in some pain. Sam, what will the story of this game be if Mitch Bradford is unable to return? Well, and, and we'll have to come to Simon Tompkins. Number seven, he's, he's been okay, but Mitch Bradford, that is a huge loss. You're losing so much experience, so much talent there. But the runners do trust Tompkins. He had a few good games while Mitch Bradford was out with, with, a, uh, with a rib injury for a few weeks. But this changes the whole dynamic of the game in the Ravens' favour, I'd say. This changes everything. So, Stegman takes over with the ball. You would assume going to the run game after the lack of success through the air, as indeed they go to the pass, and the sack there! Oh my goodness! Number five, linebacker Xavier Huey coming in, making an enormous play here. So, defence has been the story of this game all over the paddock. He's one of my favourite players in this league. He's in a one of those American imports that brings so much quality over, over, over here to Australia. He's had an incredible season, especially since he's moved the deal, uh, defensive line out of that outside linebacker position. Back him up 10 yards, ladies and gents, as Stegman throws his hands in the air, wondering what happened on the blocking there. You have to wonder if they'll go back to the pass after that big 10-yard loss. Rhino stack the box, expecting run here, though. Pass is the option, as Stegman has plenty of time, firing deep to the centre. Well, oh my goodness, way out of the reach of Mitch Bessie, as he seemed to come up a little lame there. Unsure if he was able to fully step into that route, but the ball has sailed on Stegman as he tries to go deep on that particular play. And we are in earshot of a motivational sideline speech for the Rhinos. We will not recap word for word what is being said, but loud voices and some inspiration is being shared with the Rhinos offense. But the Ravens still trailing this game with third and 20 here. Let's see if they try to pick up some manageable yardage. Sorry, to set up a manageable fourth down, and they go to the screen to Chris Farrow up the centre. Some blocks there, but taken down after the five or three yard gain, in fact. Sitting up third and 17, so no doubt unlikely to go for it in this situation. And the punters are on the field, I believe. From their own 20, sorry, 33 yard line. Perhaps just a little outside the range of Rob Quimby. In fact, certainly from where I'm sitting, that's a very long kick. But punter Stu Lyric is in the game. Deep. And uh, we do have a whistle on the field, blowing the play dead. So we await the call once again, but a flag is indeed on the field. And we have a false start penalty on the Ravens, so backing up five yards. Not a very significant penalty in this situation, as the punt will be the option on this particular play. 
And it does look like we will see Tompkins come in. Mitch Bradford kind of haunches with the medical team. Number seven will have to come in here. And perhaps it will be the Ravens defense who will be the ones trying to put points on the board as the offense has certainly struggled as we approach the end of the third quarter here. Stu once in, once again in to make the punt as this time he gets a good little punt away. Uh, and it's filled by Shyam James with some space up the right sideline but taken down there by Mark Eelswald. So interesting decision as the Gunners just run past the punt returner uh, initially setting up some space but tackled there uh, well by Canadian Mark. So back up quarterback in for the Rhinos. This will be no doubt a run heavy approach from here on out. As indeed we see a that stacked power formation once again with Estevez as the up back. And oh the ball's gone to ground and it has been recovered by the Ravens. This game is back and forth. Oh my God, first play in for the new quarterback, number seven, Keenan Tompkins fumbles the ball. Goodness gracious. Ladies and gentlemen, for you, for you folks at home trying to predict what will happen on any particular play, best of luck because I certainly have no idea. This game is flipped on its head. The Rhinos just need to... This, this is their defense game now. This, this is their defense. The defense is... This is their game now. It has been... Their whole season is this defense. They have been outstanding. This is their time now. Xavier Huey, CJ James, Jeremy Cowles. This is it. And this is for the season, no doubt, for all the marbles. As Stegman returns to the field, uh, three receivers out to the right-hand side and looks to the air once again. Fires deep to the right side. Does he have Chris Clark? Indeed he does. Catching the ball for the touchdown. My goodness, the Ravens' sideline goes absolutely wild. Seemingly the defensive back nowhere in the region. Some questions over who had his man, but Chris Clark takes the nice catch, falling backwards into the end zone there. Going ahead now are the Ravens. My goodness, three-point game. Great catch there by Chris Clark. I think that was Ernest Moore who lost his man, number eight. Unfortunate there for, for the runners' defensive men. But and great catch there by Chris Clark. Once again, a very crucial extra point play here for Rob Quimby, looking to put it to a four-point game as they need to rush onto the field with uh, time ticking down, although they do have 15 seconds on the play clock. But we will see this key extra point as Quimby is able to nail it this time. So the Ravens able to put points on the board in one of the most bizarre back and forth quarters I have ever seen. This quarter is just absolutely insane. It's flipped the game on its head. Ravens now have all the ascendancy. The runners just need to do something to get back into this. Uh, so, seemingly whatever penalty might have been on the field has been declined. So indeed, yeah, it was an offside penalty that was declined by the Ravens. And they go four points ahead, if I indeed am not mistaken. As you can see reflected on your screen, a four-point lead. Ravens 16, Rhinos 12. And in many ways, not having the ball is the best situation for either team right now as defense has been the real maker of both teams tonight. Ravens in their sprinter stance looking to chase this kick by Mitch Bessie as he kicks deep and towards the sideline but fielded there by Riley Wood who has some space towards the center, is able to get through his first tackle, through the second tackle, and eventually through the third before keep on driving his feet. Riley Wood put the team on your back all the way out to the 36 yard line. That was a great return by Riley Wood. Little man doing big things there. The question is, run. Sam, road runner or ramrod? Ooh, oh, we might need another nickname in, <laughs> in the locket there, but always ride, road runner Riley. Hopefully he gets 
Hopefully he gets the Jets going on at some point in this drive. We'd love to see it happen. And don't be fooled by his size, folks. His power in his lower half to push through those arm tackles is quite extraordinary. And no doubt his presence in the rest of this game will be crucial for the Rhinos to come, come out ahead. So Wood in the backfield as receiver goes in motion. And the handoff is to Wood. And he is taken down deep in the backfield. Three yard, a very generous spot there by the official, but perhaps taking one's further step backwards. Wow, great finish there by Adnil Thompson, helped out by, uh, by Vili. And that appears to be the end of the third quarter as the Rhinos will continue with the ball. And they will march down the field. Sam, for me, this has been the most exciting game of the season. You have been there for, I believe, all the Rhinos games. How is this game for you? Well, yeah, I've been there for the majority of the Rhinos games. And this just, for the first half, they felt like they were completely in this. And they, they had, they had the, uh, the Ravens underneath them. But now it's completely flipped. The Ravens are on top. The Rhinos just need to get back into this. They need a play. And to be fair, this is what has happened a little bit. The Rhinos have had a really good first half and then they've just dropped off the pace a little bit, let their opponent back in in the second half. They really need to not let that happen for, the, for this fourth quarter. They have the chance. Last quarter of their season, they need to make something happen, make it worth it. And quarterback Tompkins will need to play his best football for the remainder of this game in order to fight back and get those four or more points necessary. Uh, on second down and 13 here, receiver goes in motion, but backwards, and Tompkins looks to the right-hand side, finds his receiver, but loss once again on the play. So trying to set up the screen there was Tompkins, uh, but big tackle there by Canadian Mark Eulswald. One thing I'm loving from the, these open field tackles from the Ravens, they're all sticking. There's like not much you know opportunity for these rhinos to break these tackles you know as soon as they make contact they're down and i'm loving that from the from the ravens just showing their quality showing why they're you know on their potentially on their way to four pack-to-back -back championships and there were certainly initial signs in the first drive of the game as the rhinos marched up the field that the the ravens looked a little bit lost but certainly they are finding their way as the game goes on this time rolling out to the left is tompkins trying to fire left but man oh man pressure is in his face and the ravens are showing sheer excitement after that play Hopefully you can hear the field mics and the sound of the Ravens' sideline. But certainly spirits are now high on their side of the ball. Okay, that brings up the fourth down here. So punter come wide receiver Tom Fenwick looking to pin them <coughs> once again deep in their half as the kick is away. Not the best punt of the night, but fielded here by Chris Clark, who's able to go through a couple arm tackles, find the sideline. Can he bring some more magic as he brought earlier in the game? Very nice return down to the 35. <laughs> Chris Clark playing a major factor in this game as it goes on. Uh, we do have a Ravens player down. Jack Popel with Cramp. Cramp seeming to be a major factor today for reasons that aren't quite clear to me. Cool temperatures are present here at WJ Scott Park in Holland Park. So a bit of a delay in play here with some injuries on the field. Uh, let me just rephrase, perhaps not injury, perhaps uh, just a bit of cramp, uh, I would hope, on the part of defensive back Jack Popel. Ten seventeen remaining in this game. Clock presumably stopped in this situation. So Popel returns to his feet 
and will walk off. We wonder if he is available back in this sideline. He has been covering Tom Hansen throughout this game. Doing quite a good job as well. Tom Hansen had a couple drops, a little a few misreads, but Jack Popel is very important for this defense. You'd hate to lose him for the Ravens. No doubt hard to recover from Cramp. But walking towards the sideline is Popel as he's not quite to the sideline. You'd hope that the Ravens do not snap the ball quite yet. But indeed they do not as Stegman in, their, in the backfield with uh, a running back I can't identify. I'm assuming that's Ben Curley though. Goes with a hard count, not drawing anyone offside. Much more discipline on the Rhino side than we saw last week. Warwick Bones Russell unable to catch that ball. Met as it hit his hands by the defender. Salwa Bembe is a rookie this year. He's had a great year. He's, had, he's been very important for this Rhino's defense. He's had a, a couple of interceptions there, a few pass breakups, but just enough pressure there on Warwick Russell to um, force the incompletion. And great anticipation on his behalf to crash into the receiver there to break up the pass. So, limited success through the air for the Ravens. They set up second down out of the pistol formation once again, looking to the ground this time with Ben Curley, who has some space up the centre, looking to push through and finds his way all the way for the first down. So you'd have to assume, given the limited success through the air, the run game through Ben Curley and Chris Farrell will be the way from here, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. And uh, Ben Curley said to me in uh, an interview earlier today, he said that some of his linemen are already all the way down the field, already in front of him before he even gets to that point. So this O-line is starting to become a really big factor, and I reckon they'll stick with this run game. And making their mark on the defense of the Rhinos. So three receivers to the left side this time. If I were play caller and quarterback Jared Stegman, I'd be sticking with that run game. But no doubt he'll be looking to stamp his particular mark on this game as we have a whistle on the field. False start and perhaps might be delay of game. Once again, delay of game. So, something that we haven't seen all season from the Ravens, ill discipline on getting the ball away, perhaps with a bit of rotation in at quarterback with the departure of Joe Cox and incoming of Jared Stegman. Not quite the right timing at present at this time of the season. So they back them up five yards and still here for first down. So Ravens here with the ball. Oh, no, excuse me. Sorry, not a false start. On the defense, first and five here. Pardon me. The penalty being on the Rhinos but this time Stegman looks to the right side fires deep and out of the reach of Mitch Bessie and that connection good at times bad at others outside the reach of receiver Mitchell Bessie Stegman's had a couple deep shots tonight that one not working obviously the one to Chris Clark they might try uh, Chris Clark for that touchdown they might try it a couple more times if they get the opportunity but that one just not connecting there for Mitch Bessie and seemingly Bessie open there just overshoots him down the right side of the field so perhaps feeling the impact of the hits that he's taken so far tonight is quarterback Stegman fakes the handoff shoots to the left hand side with receiver oh, ball to Graham but recovered by the Ravens my goodness folks hearts dropped for a moment there for Ravens faithful as Chris Clark has the ball but is able to uh, despite losing it, jumped back on his own fumble. That was very, very close there for the Ravens. The Rhinos, that, that's what I'm thinking. Is it a fumble that gets them back into this game? Is it maybe an interception in the red zone that gets them back into this game? But that was a massive opportunity there, but Chris Clark very lucky to draw that back in. Understanding the situation, got on top of that ball as best he could. So, third and four here. Oh, and the uh, brings them offside. Free play here. Whistle is blown, so clearly some contact on the offensive line, but that will most likely be against the defense. Finally, the hard count plays, uh, pays off here for the Ravens. We'll wait for the exact call as definitely some conferring between officials, which makes you wonder, Sam, if that is a false start. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the refs come up with here. Not exactly sure what's happened. Nope, we have uh, offside encroachment 
by the defense. So first down here for the Ravens, and that is a killer blow for the Rhinos in this situation. And credits once again to the officials. Outstanding job all night long. We also have replay officials in the booth with us here, feeding us key information as the game goes on. So thank you to those in the field. Thank you to those on the sideline. Outstanding job by all the Gridiron Queensland officials here tonight. So play continues here with the clock running. Fourth quarter, Ravens ahead 16 to 12 against the, uh, the Brisbane Rhinos. Stegman has the ball, goes toss left hand side to Ben Curley, trying to use speed to the outside, finds a bit of a hole, is able to push through and pick up a very nice gain, maybe eight yards. Ravens are getting very, very close here to making this untouchable for the Rhinos. They just need to hold them here, Brisbane. They have the opportunity, but the Ravens so much far up on this offense, you'd find it they would find it very difficult not to get into the end zone here. And with second and three ball in possession, you'd have to assume staying safe is the key priority for the Ravens play callers. So we have two, uh, sorry, one running back in the backfield, but a bit of a stack there on the left side as receiver goes in motion. Uh, we have the pop pass to Chris Clark, who finds the space up the middle, head down, able to pick up most likely the first down, as we do once again have a Rhinos player stay down. That's Jackson Collins, the linebacker. I, I did see him struggling a little bit on the sideline earlier. Maybe that's a little bit of an extension of that uh, potential injury. And yeah, that looked a little nasty on for number 35 there. And ladies and gents, that camera angle, fantastic. Beautiful contact you saw between the offensive and defensive players. Credit once again to the Calling All Sports team on that particular angle. You can really get an insight into the speed and ferocity of offense and defense on that play as uh, CJ meets... Uh, Chris Clark on that particular play. <laughs> the player being clapped off the field and we have uh, just over seven minutes remaining in this game. So good respect shown by both, time, both teams here as uh, the Ravens take the, take the knee in hopes of the return of the Rhinos player. Seven minutes left in your season. For the Rhinos, you've got to make this count for the Ravens. You've just got to stick it here. This is their moment. This is why they're champions if they can get it done here. And not an unmanageable game at this stage, but you'd have to think if they're able to punch the ball in here, tough times for the Rhinos. So Rhinos defense step up now or never as an audible on the play by quarterback Stegman Running back Curly goes to the left side, so perhaps I would imagine a speed option here to the left side, given the stance. Indeed, he goes to the speed option, keeps the ball himself, and is crunched there by number 43, Jack Lowe, who has returned from playing overseas, uh, having received, I believe, a scholarship to play over in America. Confusion there initially on the handoff. Curly thought speed option, Stegman thought handoff. So... Curly not quite getting the message on that particular audible. An important point now, that actually changes the downs. Where it's first and goal, the Ravens have a big opportunity here and, and multiple opportunities. This is a huge part of the game. First and goal from the two. In fact, it's absolute smash mouth football from here on out, folks. I am unlikely to see a pass play as indeed the toss left-hand side to Ben Curly who has a seam and gets, oh my goodness, down to the one-yard line. But flags fly again. Great defensive hold there from the Rhinos as clearly Ben Curley with the speed to the sideline tracked down from behind. Might be a horse collar perhaps. I'm sorry I didn't quite catch that particular one. Uh, but the down marker is backing up. So penalty against... The Ravens just what the Rhinos needed in this situation. So back them up 10 yards, still first down. So now the run game not quite as effective perhaps. Will they go to the air looking maybe for... We will find out right in a moment to Warwick Bones-Russell who is tackled 
shy of the line. And that brings you into into run game territory now. There was the opportunity to go for the pass. They used that opportunity. Great throw there by Jared Stegman going across this progression. And now you assume run play, run play, run play is the name of the game now for the Ravens in this particular area. Indeed, with five yards to go. Oh, yep, roughly five yards to go, I believe, to the uh, to the line, uh, the touchdown line. Running the ball seems to be most effective here as we have six minutes left in this game. Man in motion is Chris Clark, gets the pop pass, looking to have similar success as he had previously. Once again, flags fly. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen, the officials are getting involved in this game as holding is the call on the offense and back him up 10 yards once again. You'd have to assume they're accepting this penalty on second and five. Or well, second and goal from the five. And initial signs from the Rhinos might have indicated a possible fumble, but I, I, I can't hear any confirmation of that on the field. And confirmation there from head official Brian Bolzamo that it is a holding penalty against the offense. So back him up 10 yards, still second down. So no doubt all of this... All these penalties, all of these plays, this is a very, very long drive, churning up the clock in this key situation here in, in the final game of the season for both teams. Shotgun formation from their 15-yard line. Sorry, pistol formation. Has some time, fires the middle of the field. Braden Quinn with the touchdown! Center of the field, my God! Ravens go! More than a score ahead. Ravens faithful going absolutely wild on the far side of the field. Wide open, absolute dolly pass. Hits him in the chest. And Braden Quinn, suffering concussions throughout this season, has the story tale ending to his season, pushing the Ravens perhaps out of reach of the Rhinos late into this fourth quarter. And yet, I said earlier, the Ravens, this is why they are champions. What... What a player there, Brandon Quinn under a bit of pressure there. And then Jared Stegman, obviously the experience there. We know what Jared Stegman's all about, what he brings to any, t any type of offense. Fantastic from him. Kick is away and it is good, but once again, flags fly. But no doubt Braden Quinn will remember that play for a very, very long time, how he caught arguably the touchdown winning play. Sorry, the game winning touchdown. But we have, once again, a false start on the Ravens. So, Ravens attempt once again the extra point. Rob Quimby, not quite 12 out of 12 as he was last week, or 12 out of 13. But, oh, and we have no good on the extra point. So three missed kicks tonight from Quimby has been the story with some great rush so far by the Rhinos. We also have once again a player down. Uh, that appears to be Vili. Hopefully he's able to get back to his feet and hopefully that is fatigue related and not injury related. Uh, but he has stayed down. Sam, in this situation, what do the Rhinos need to do to try and gain back 10 points and the lead in this game? While I would like to, to have belief in Kenan Tompkins, I just feel like Mitch Bradford would leave this offense better. That's no disrespect to, to Tompkins at all. I think he's a really good quarterback. But Mitch Bradford brings all that experience, all that talent. I'm not too sure if he'll come back in. I haven't seen him. He's in that little, um, off, uh, that little group down there on the sideline for the Rhinos. But this is going to be a massive drive. If they can have a fight, they ne it needs to be fast. They cannot like they they can't mess around with this. This ha this needs to be efficient. This needs to be effective, so that they can get the opportunity to have the ball back. And then even then, you need to go for an onside kick or get the ball back fast from the Ravens. But with all those things to consider, I, I think the Ravens has, have this pretty much closed out. So quick score, quick onside kick, and the game is still there. But 
No doubt with your backup quarterback, confidence isn't quite as high as it would have been with Mitch Bradford. But what a storyline that might be if Bradford is able to return to this game. But initial indications, at least as we saw him walking off earlier in the game, were not positive. And certainly he stayed down for quite a time, as indeed uh, Vili, the Ravens player, stays on down on the field at the moment. But once again, it appears to be a cramp-related issue although we do have three medics on the field to try and attend to him. So we do hope he's okay, um, but unsure of the nature of the injury at this stage. Just a quick look at um, Tompkins on the season, 43% completion rate, you know, tw uh, just over 300 yards, two touchdowns in there, a couple interceptions. You know, for a backup, he's really solid. And I think, you know, you know miracle type of si situation, can he do something special? Be really important to see what happens here now. No doubt his mark on this game will be the telltale sign or not the Rhinos will uh, claw back in this game. So it's been an extremely exciting game, folks, and we have probably our first extended delay in this game. Uh, so stick with us. Maybe it's the time to... Nope. Now is not the time to run to the toilet or do anything in particular as the player is being helped to his feet. So we will resume play hopefully very, very shortly. So I want to thank everyone involved with Green Island Queensland who's able, been able to set up this particular field here, the WJ Scott Park field here in Holland Park. Really one of the great venues that we've had the opportunity to attend throughout the season. Naturally, as we would have seen with certain fields at certain other places, uh, such as last week at the Logan City Bears, the field conditions aren't always ideal for high-level play, uh, but the field conditions tonight have been outstanding. So credit to all those involved with organising this and credit to the groundskeepers for maintaining a very nice pitch here tonight yeah and we've had th this is our third game on this field and it looks really good even after th you know almost three um three periods of play this is a great ground really uh, as you said credit to the um field staff they've done a really good job here tonight absolutely as the ravens player is very slowly taken off the field assisted by two of his teammates Okay, after that extended delay, we will be returning to the fourth quarter of this game as the Ravens, who've just gone further ahead with the touchdown, will now kick the ball away to the Rhinos. Hopefully the return by Riley Wood, who has been quite the electric player in this game as the ball is deep to the left-hand side of the field. This time indeed taken by Riley Wood, who has some space to the centre of the field and absolutely crunched by Mark Edelswald. My God! Riley Wood stays down but is able to get to his feet, showing the truly tough competitor that he is. Oh my goodness, I spoke to him at halftime. He said he was feeling a little bit tender and someone of that size going up against these really big defense, defensive players for the Ravens. Definitely going to feel like that, but even after that, oh my goodness. That rocked me in my chair. That was an insane hit to watch. I'm sorry if that's not one of the biggest hits I've ever seen live. I don't know what is. I would love to see a replay of that at some point. But continuing play right now are the Rhinos with backup quarterback, backup running back in play. This time going to the ground with Carlos Matos, who has big space to the left sideline and is hit, met there by Hodgkinson, who throws him out of bounds. No penalty, though, so throws him while still in the field of play. Good thing there. He also got out of bounds as well. Indeed, Stops stopping the clock. the clock. But we have a whistle on the field and some discussion between the head coach of the Rhinos and head official Brian Balsamo. And we have a bit of issue with replay in the booth at the moment. Uh, an issue not only for the live stream, but also for the replay officials who would be reviewing the plays on the field. Presumably, the review is whether or not the player was out of bounds when he was thrown to the ground, and whether or not that would be a uh, roughing penalty. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully we'll get that replay up for you and you'll see and make a judgment for yourself whether or not it was foul play. Like, the thing is, like, if 
So still figuring it out here in terms of what to do if uh, unable to review the footage. But hopefully we will be able to get that to you very shortly. So a bit of ill-discipline by both teams has been a bit of a story throughout this game. And once again, it would be terrible to see Tom Hodgkinson be the cause of a 15-yard penalty, if indeed that is the case. Certainly with his double Dikembe Mutombo fingers that he showed earlier in this game, costing his team, uh, would be a question uh, whether or not he is at fault once again. And unfortunately, we have had confirmation that replay is unavailable. So uh, it will appear that no, the call will be no foul play on that particular play. So Mike might have gotten away with one, did Tom Hodgkinson on that particular play. But first down and action returns and the energy returns here on the sideline for the Rhinos. Looking to claw back with their backup quarterback in the game, Tompkins, as we have another stop in play. But... Play will indeed return here with Tompkins looking to take it out of the shotgun formation. Tompkins gets it away, hands it off inside once again to Riley Wood who has made a miraculous return and is met fiercely once again. Perhaps getting this time the better of the defender, Rob Quimby. Riley Wood, give him the toughest man on the field award, absolutely buries the helmet that time. My God, look at that impact, what a camera angle. Gets a little bit of his own back there, Riley Wood. Starting to feel a little bit like the Rhinos have, the ch have a chance here. This is a big moment in this game. If they can get another one of those plays and then another one, they are in this. And truly a shock or at least a surprise to me after taking that hit early in the game and seeing, for me, him holding his back on the sideline and within five or ten minutes, perhaps that prolonged delay assisting his recovery as he now is behind the quarterback, gets the handoff once again, finds a bit of space, flags fly once again, up through the middle, through for the first town initially, but will await the call from the official as th signs not looking positive uh, that may well once again be against the Rhinos. So, yes, we have confirmation of the penalty. So that is Riley Solomon Grundy Woods cannot be hold down, held down for long, making a miraculous recovery on the sideline after taking that savage hit and delivering his own contact. But they are now in the first and 15 situation. And for me, Sam, this is one of the, one of the highlights of the season, this back and forth affair. This is a great way to end the year. I am absolutely satisfied with this game so far. Let's see what what it has left in the tank. And no doubt on the edge of our seats going forward throughout the remainder of this game is the fake handoff given this time. Oh my God, the ball's in the air, batted down. Oh, where is it? It is in fact batted down. Riley Wood batting down his own pass after the initial juggle and Sam, hands on head, confusion, excitement, unsure of the emotions at present. My goodness, what is what is this game? And as I said, what a great way to end the year. So we got Bobble up in the air, looks to bat it down. Oh my goodness. Pops and out of a mul multiple players' arms. Oh takes the hit as well. You have to wonder what the life bar of Riley Wood looks like. But standing no more than three metres away from us in front of us right now, he looks happier than ever. Seemingly unfazed by all of those hits meaning Carlos Matos in the backfield as pressure comes. Finds his man, though, does Tompkins, but taken down their combination tackle between Bailey and Edelswald. Rhinos have got to start top, uh, up, in, up in the tempo here. Time is against them. Tompkins is a good ball, but Williams unable to make anything happen after the catch. And, yes, good, good recovery there from the Ravens after giving up that short pass. But Tompkins, with certain signs of life, Relying upon perhaps the strength of the short passing game continuing throughout this game. So you will have to wonder if 
Uh, wide out to the right, Tom Hansen will get a look in in the remainder of this game, but he is looking left this time as pressure comes, fires left. Oh! Interception no good there from Reino Fury. Hansen on his cut was open there if he just left that side of the field with his eyes. And simply never looks oh. that way as he was keyed in on the receiver who took that hit after the play. So this has become an increasingly physical game from both sides as the game has gone on. This game simply has had everything, several lead changes, physical football, some officiating for you folks at home who enjoy that interaction, uh, and indeed injuries and touchdowns alike. So three receivers out to the left side out of the pistol. We are looking to the air once again as pressure is too much for Tompkins. The sounds of hands whacking on uh, fence on the far sideline as the Ravens supporters are very high spirited at present. And I reckon that pretty much closes out the game now. And to say that the Rhinos weren't in this, you know, after this. Sorry, after this. was that fourth down? That was that fourth was down. Fourth down. Yes, My was goodness, fourth down. of course it was. So indeed, yes, that does change everything, Sam. Yeah. Sorry, go on. The Rhinos were in this for so much of the game, but the Ravens, I was waiting for the moment where they showed their championship quality, and now they have. And it's all down to what they can just finish off here, finish off this game so close to another championship. And defense will be the key thing right here for the Rhinos as Chris Farrer is able to securely hold the ball and go to ground. But smartly, the Rhinos are attempting to strip that ball. So the message here from the Rhinos faithful will be to hold the ball carrier up and rip the ball away, especially given the high running style of running back Chris Farrer. So time out here by the Rhinos to stop the clock. Three minutes left here in this game. Timeout taken by the Rhinos. So the play clock is ticking down, but presumably that is for sideline entertainment and not for any consequence. Sideline here for the Rhinos, a little quieter than earlier in the game, but no doubt the message will be that defense wins championships as Tompkins uh, warms up on the sideline with Bradford who seems to be trying out his throwing form. From where I'm standing, signs do not look positive for return but clearly his toughness will not be the limiting factor. I would highly doubt he's back in. He's really, really holding that left arm up. Looks like that shoulder has pretty much kept him out now. But as you said, defense wins championships. I need to see something from Xavier Huey here. He's been so big this year. Sack today. Let's see if he can make something happen. Sack fumble would be the key here if they're able to do it. But inside handoff once again to Farrow. Has some space up the center and is able to push forward just shy of the first down. Once again, timeout. This time by <laughs> the Rhinos. Initial indications were for the Ravens, but recorrection to the Rhinos. So... Still got the two-minute warning to stop the clock with third down and one here, but if the Ravens are able to pick up the first down, Sam, not looking good for the Rhinos. Yeah, I, I reckon a first down pretty much pretty much takes the Rhinos out of it. You know, get the clock, keep the clock running, and then the Ravens are in really good positions and uh, position themselves. This is a big moment in the game, but if, hold them to fourth down here, huge. So we, uh, we await continue of play here um, as you have to think towards who has been the impact players of this particular game. Uh, Sam, who for you, uh, given the current scoreline, given the current situation, has been your sort of top key players on offense and defense? Quickly to my mind, Chris Clark had that massive return off that kickoff with that fake end around. The touchdown, as you said, uh, the touchdown has have, um, as it happened, and then he's had some big catches as well and some big tackle breaks. I reckon he is a very good shout for that for that MVP. And I don't think you'd find much argument from anyone if that was the MVP announcement. But 
We will find out as time goes on and if as the game continues. Chris Clark with the handoff this time, trying to make that MVP campaign. Get some sideline space all the way. Touchdown. Goodness gracious me, flag on the field. We may have jumped the gun on that particular touchdown. In fact, seemingly it is coming back and Chris Clark will... Uh, Try to add that to his MVP resume, but may have had some assistance with a block in the back there. Or indeed, perhaps a holding. As is indeed the call by head official Brian Bolzano. So, though you cannot hear him, Brian Bolzano confirming that on the field. Uh, We still have manageable down and distance, though, for the Ravens on what will likely be a third and 11. But backing up a little further, you'd have to assume, even though it is third and long sand, that they would be sticking to the ground. Yeah, you'd assume so, just to, just to keep chopping the clock off. They are so close now, the Ravens, to four, four straight championships. And just saying that, four straight championships, what a team this is, what a season they've had. Incredible game as well. Despite perhaps a focus on the run game, we do have three wide receivers split out. Tight end in. Oh, ball goes to ground, and Stegman just falls on it smartly, understanding the situation. So that'll back him up, and the punter will come in for the fourth down kick. And you have to wonder, will they send the house to try and block the punt? In fact, you might even assume that a punt is so risky, given the 10-point lead, that do you just simply take a knee, or do you try and pin the opponents in this situation? I reckon the, the knee idea is actually a really good point. Just, you know, you, you'll trust your defense in that situation. The punt could be risky. You do have a little bit of wins, but... Away from that, it will be interesting just to see what they do here. Well, we will not deal with fiction. In fact, we will deal with reality as punter Stu comes on once again to try and pin them deep. But after a shaky start to this game, will he be able to pin them? The ball goes away, and it's a very nice kick, very soft kick to the sideline. Will it be fielded? In fact, it will be. And he finds some space to the sideline, does the runner, before being taken out of bounds. We just hit the two morning warning, ladies and gentlemen, as we're having discussions on the sideline about who has been the most valuable player of this game. We'll await that call at the end of the game. So Mitch Bradford on the field, injury and all. Can you believe it? it throws an absolute wobbler and seemingly a mistake there as Edelswald bounds away. You cannot imagine what he's doing trying to make that tackle, but Edelswald returns it for the touchdown. And you can't, you can't blame the heart of Mitch Bradford, not only for the throw coming into the game, but also attempting to make the tackle. But you do have to question why he would do that in that situation. He's not stopping the much larger man from getting in. So much heart for Mitch Bradford. And giving his Some all, as you said. absolute speed there from the, ab from the unit that is Mark Edelswald. You, you really do have to wonder what's going through his head trying to make that tackle, especially considering the injury he's had. I'm just going to chalk that up to a bit of youth and inexperience, and hopefully that hasn't further increased his injury. So that was a touchdown on the field, and extra point. Attempt here from Rob Quimby. Hold is good, kick is away, and kick is good. So that puts the Ravens up by now seemingly an insurmountable lead after a, such a bizarre second half in so many ways. 
Sam, what would you be saying if you were the coach? What would you be saying to Bradford at this particular moment in time? I'm not going to lie. I'd probably... Like, there's two, there's two ways to say this. It's like, well done, but your shoulder, but also the heart from you I absolutely love seeing it but you just but then you also go the shoulder you've got to think about the shoulder that is going that might hinder his preseason you know you've got to think forward now but I I, I do love the heart from Mitch Bradford day he's full heart on the field and that is a big effort play even in under his conditions and we find out if he returns to the field as this kick is away once again to Riley Wood who will field it on the deep kick Setting up the block there by Sham Jameson. Space up the middle. Dodges the first tackle. Dodges the second, but is brought down there by the Ravens. So surely we will not see Mitch Bradford return to the field in what has got to be, hopefully, a discontinuation of any further injury to that shoulder. So the Ravens faithful will no doubt be starting to begin their celebrations on the sideline as they look towards that four-peat. But the Rhinos will try and have their last laugh in this particular game, trying to go ahead, or sorry, trying to increase their score uh, from 12 points. Quarterback Tompkins in the backfield. Gets the ball, looks to the air, fires to the right side, and it's short of the receiver there, Hansen, who, after being initially a big factor in this game, hasn't been present much in the second half. So good to see that Bradford has stayed on the sidelines in what has got to be, uh, you know, the right, the correct decision given his injury and given the situation in this particular game. Oh, 100%. I was surprised he even got the opportunity to come back in. <laughs> On that throw, he didn't even move his left arm and oh, just cringing in pain at watching the replay of him going down after that attempted bump out. But see what Tompkins can do here. You really do hope it was simply a stinger that caused it all. But Tompkins in at quarterback, looks to the air once again, fires right side deep this time to, to Hansen, who has the ball batted away. Great defense there. No doubt trying to air it out as this game ends. That was a very fine pass, but matched by very fine defense. That time over there by the Ravens defender. I'm assuming that's Jordan Desbro, although I can't see the number. Just looking now at the sideline, Mitch Bradford walking back with one of the medical staff. He's up and about, and it's good to see. Please, someone take that man's pads off for... If not his sake, for my sake. But luckily not favouring his arm too much. But we return to play as Tompkins, and it seems to be perhaps a false start on this particular play. Indeed, false start confirmed there by head official Brian Bolzamo. As we see some players on the Rhino sideline also suffering from cramps. So conditions and conditioning playing a big factor tonight as both sides suffering from from. Uh, several players falling down to cramp. As my co-commentator is drawing his best uh, British sign language. Doling out medical advice and hot takes on the mic, left, right and centre. We continue to the action here as Tompkins, out of the shotgun, looks to the air once again, rolls left, has plenty of time, and fires to the sideline, throwing it out of bounds. So with this game out of reach, uh, I think the, the, the player performances across the board from the Ravens, especially in the second half, have been quite outstanding. As we have talked about, Chris Clark has been quite the X factor. No doubt the interception by Matthew Bailey, truly one of the key turning points in this game to help forge this victory or presumed victory here by the Ravens. Yeah, this game completely flipped on its head. A few moments in this game, as you said, the interception. And now the Ravens... Fourth down, this is where they cement their, cement their legacy. Fourth down and long here. 
The Rhinos will be hoping for a wish and a prayer as Tomkin looks at the air once again, firing right side to Hansen, who's able to pick up the first down. So some life left still on a very beautiful 10-yard out route there. And great pass, great connection between Hansen and Tomkins. That's a good, com good completion there by, by Tomkins. And Hansen, there's that experience that Mitch Bradford said in, in our talk earlier today. But now we are getting a very, very close to the end of this game now. Indeed, some whistles were blown by the head official over there. Uh, we aren't yet exactly sure, but I think we are nearing, if not already hit, end of regulation. Oh, no, indeed, we have a player down, another player suffering with cramp. So this has been the cramp bowl alongside a sun bowl and a big sun bowl victory for the four-time, now four-time champion, Bayside Ravens. But the game is not yet over, folks, at least it's not as far as I can tell. But anyone who thought that the pace of the first quarter would be maintained without the, uh, throughout the, the rest of the game would be mistaken as this game has uh, continued in typical American football fashion uh, as we now approach uh, quarter to nine in the evening. So, the Rhinos on first down with five receivers set out here. Cheyenne James with a catch with blocks set up. is able to dodge a couple tackles before eventually being brought down just shy of the first down. Mark Eelswald, one of those impact players in there on that tackle. Yeah, Cheyenne James brings a little bit of wide receiver experience to this Rhinos team, even though he is a safety, has had a touchdown this year. But at, at the moment, it's just, just winding down the clock now. Indeed, looking for X-Factor players to be on the field at present, so no doubt CJ will need to be out there to try and continue the fight back here from the Rhinos. Once again, flags fly on the field. As the Rhinos begin walking backwards, the penalty appears to be accepted against against them. Though they might be going down in this particular game, the Rhinos can keep their heads high after what has been truly an outstanding season from them. The improvement that, that they have displayed throughout the last couple games has been outstanding as they rush to the line with five receivers and oh my goodness, what's going on here? Surely some confusion at play rushing to the line and then perhaps supposed to be a hard count but the uh, center snaps the ball with under a minute left in play as the clock rolls on and oh good good get off there by Joel Maddock but the flag does fly so perhaps a little too good but we have once again another stoppage in play due to a penalty so the last minute of the game in true fashion drawn out to uh, perhaps a little more than 15 minutes at this stage for the last couple minutes of this particular game. <laughs> People starting to discuss their sideline dinner, uh, well, their dinner post-game, uh, as priorities now change back to life as you all know it as this game to con continues to tick down under a minute left. Third down and three here for the Rhinos as they rush to the line. Trying to play up-tempo is Tompkins. New under center, fights to the middle and batted down by Mark Edelswald. Choosing to uh, not take that interception. Setting up fourth down and three here. Twenty-one seconds left in this game. So you can see there, choosing to bat that ball down. No need to further pat the stats. Pat, pat, pat the stats. My goodness, fatigue gets us all. Just 
Tompkins with five wide receivers. Again, another quick get off there by Joel Maddock as Tompkins fires high of the player. And that is, that is probably going to be it as the ball is turned over and the Ravens will come in and take a knee. Once again, out of their shotgun formation. So congratulations to the four-time champion Bayside Ravens who will enter their victory formation. Once again, keep your heads high. The Brisbane Rhinos faithful on what has been an outstanding season and a real fight, especially in the early half of this particular game. But Sam, as you probably can tell, this game is over. Who has, you know, what are your final thoughts as we head towards the end of regulation time? The Ravens, while they struggled at the start, they really, really showed what this team is and what the identity of a championship team is as they all start to celebrate now. It is party time in Bayside. And it was the quarterback who led them all season, Joe Cox, who took the final play of the game on the kneel down. As the Ravens faithful do indeed go wild. We will stay with you on the live stream as we get announcements for MVPs and congratulations of the winners uh, this evening. So we'll put that production together. But for at present, it has been a pleasure uh, to have brought you and called this game for you. Uh, my name is Bart Foley calling from WJ Scott Park in association with Sam Aitchison, who has been an outstanding co-commentator this evening. Sam, uh, thanks from you and me and any final thoughts as you send the folks home tonight. Thank you as well, Bart. You have been outstanding as well tonight and also throughout the season at Opportunities. This has been a great game. Fantastic festival of football here in Holland Park. Great show out from you know fans all around, all around the area and really, really looking forward to next season as well. It's going to be a great year. Absolutely. And looking to the sideline of the Ravens, celebrations continue on. So stay with us. We will get an announcement of the MVPs. But for now, I'm signing off and saying goodnight. Thank you for listening.
Oh, we'll get we'll do the quick word from the coaches. We could do the minor primary as well, wait for them to come over. Uh, while we wait for the Rhinos to migrate over, um, someone from the Ravens wants to come forward and receive the minor premiers trophy for this season. Thank you. Do you want to... Jace, do you want to... Got any words to say? We'll just be a moment. Otherwise, there's two lots of talk. You can only hear me twice. Once is even once is too many. Oh, I shouldn't say all that one on the mic. I mean, at least they took me to night. Uh, if I get Coach Levi to come forward and say a few words potentially if he's around. Um, I've, I've said it quietly, a tough loss. Um, what, have you got anything to say, say to the team, the Ravens? Uh, like I, Sorry, I'm, I've got a short call. Yeah, that's all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> I got two mics, yeah? yeah. So, uh, no, I mean, just like I said, I mean, I was, I'm impressed by everything that happened throughout the season for me coming here and everything, the way the GQ is. These two great teams here, obviously, I got to be with these guys. Well, I'm looking at my team first, so, <laughs> so I got to look at these guys every single day and where they've been. And now here, like, man, it's awesome, okay? Just watching all these guys grow and watching all these guys, like, you know, embrace the football culture from somebody who's lived it my whole entire life. Like, these guys really are, like, just a remarkable group of young men. And these guys over here, man, you always, you always give a fight, man. Top hats off to you, y'all. I mean, I'll tell you this right now, though. I always love some balls like this. You got to love championships like this, right? These are hard-fought hard ones, okay? If it ain't worth it, man, we wouldn't be out here, you know what I'm saying? So... Uh, that's about all I got, guys. I don't, I'm not really a man of words right now. I'm sure I'll talk to all of y'all later on, but that's all I got for me. So, Thanks, Coach. Um, we'll call forward uh, Mr. Jason Leon to come and say a few words as well. How does it feel? Four in a row. Um, honestly, it couldn't be done without our support staff. So the board, everyone involved with Gridon Queensland, obviously, um, the amount of play coaches that have helped the guys that just give up their time, the team themselves, every single one of you guys, um, it's just phenomenal. Um, we, 15 years ago, weren't anything. We struggled. We didn't, you know, maybe one or two wins. Um, and it's just been a case of growing the culture, getting there. And, hey, look, you can see it's happening at the Rhinos. You can see how much they're hurting. And we've been there. We we've have experienced this. And we can see the culture you guys are bringing. And I love it, all right? I love how hard that game was, and it, it sucks that you lost your starting QB because I know it could have definitely been different coming down the stretch there with your starting QB. So, look, my hat goes off to you, Coach Levi. You've done amazing things with your boys. And, um, look, to every single one of our guys, thank you for the time, the effort. I appreciate you beyond words. All right, uh, just a couple of formalities left to go. The first one being the MVP for today's Sunball. That would be number five, Chris Clark. Appreciate you. You want me to say something? Yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, yeah. hard fuck game. Thank you so much for coming out, Rhinos. You guys are fucking ballers. I'm sorry. You guys, you guys, you guys are ballers, all right? You guys are ballers. And to my, hey, and to my boys, appreciate you guys taking me in five years ago. 
Love each and every one of you guys. Yes, Four Pete, man. Four time. Let's go. <laughs> and for the final time, can I please get the Ravens captains towards to come to Ravens captains to come forward and receive the Sun Bowl for 2022. Congratulations, Bayside Ravens. I'm getting out of the way. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That is, concludes our Sunball for 2022. <laughs>